Okay, we are live. Hey, everybody, this is Jam Creates. I am here with Sean Davis, one of the creators of Pillow Man and Blanket Boy. Uh, and he's got the other creator with him, I, I believe. Yes, his name is Parker Davis. He's the creator and co-writer of Pillow Man and Blanket Boy. <laughs> so this is a comic book that was created by you and your son. Yes. Um, now, how did this whole thing come? Like, how did this even start? Where did the idea come from? How did this whole thing even start? Well, uh, Parker, he, um, I think he was about three years old and, you know, as any other kid, you know, they, they like to run around and play and just jump around and act out stuff. And one day he came downstairs and, you know, he had his blanket around his, his neck and started talking about some guy named Blanket Boy. And I was just like, all right, that's, that's good. I had no clue who that is. And, you know, as a parent you know, a three-year-old is just talking crazy to you and you're just like, yeah, yeah, you agree. And then, you know, they run off and go, go about their business again. Well, he just kept going on about it. I mean, you know, over time and it just started growing. And then he came up with a uh, pillow man, pillow man's the, you know, the main guy and blanket boy is the sidekick because, um, Parker always liked Robin. He, he was, wanted to be Robin when he got 10 years old. He wanted to be like Damian Wayne. And, you know, he actually thought that when he got 10, that he would be Robin. And it was a, it was a pretty b bad day when he found out that Batman and Robin was not real. It was kind of uh. the, the, the Santa Claus moment. So, you know, it, it was, it was a bad day, but, um, sorry, but, um, just from that, it, he just kept coming up with these stories and it just kept getting more complex, the more, the older he got and it just became huge. He wouldn't let it go. It was not just, you know, the ramblings of a small child. It was something that he had fleshed out and, you know, really thought about it. And then through time, as he's grown, the stories have gotten more complex. The characters, I mean, he, he has, I swear, how many characters do you think you have? 20 to 30 characters yeah. in this part wow. of the place, I like Even to call some it. some that you haven't actually drawn. I just kind of made them. Yeah, that's that's how he does. Um, he comes up with this stuff, and then he tells me, and I'm just like, wait, 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 wait. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing something else. Please give me give me time. Draw it or write it down. Do something so I don't forget. So, But, yeah, that's how that came about. So then for the specific book, Maximum Velocity, did you guys sit down together and come up with the storyline for this particular book? Or was it like, how did, how did you actually put like sit down and put pen to paper and figure out, okay, this is the story we're telling for this particular book. Well, the way we do it is there's never any sitting down except for me. He is, he is always on the move. And, you know, like I said, he, he comes up with this stuff and I'm the one that tells him that, you know, you need to stop. You need to write it down. You need to draw it for me and then we'll come up with it. So then I'll think of something and I'll run it by him. And if he likes it, then we'll go along with it. If he doesn't like it. And I, I can usually tell if he doesn't, if he's not really hundred percent behind it, we'll scrap it. And then I'll draw something up and usually on a page or, or anything that I do with the comic, I usually get him to, to tell me if he likes it or not. And um, always, if he can tell what's going on on the page without words, without anything else. And if he, if he knows what's going on, then, you know, that's usually when I take that as a good sign that, yeah, I think we're good to go here. So now do you work uh, traditionally or do you work digitally? I work digitally. It's all digital. I, I sit at the kitchen table with my iPad and, or yeah, my iPad pro and just draw on that. Oh, okay. I try to stay involved with the family. I don't want to get too, too far away to where it seems like I'm not, you know, with everybody else. So right. it's, it's juggling family and drawing and, you know, it, it's, it's hectic sometimes. Right. Well, cause this is not, you know, this is not what you're doing full time. So this is, yeah. you got to make the time to, to, to make this work. Exactly. And, and I mean, it's nice cause you're doing it with your son too. So that's, you are still, even though you're, you're drawing the comic, you're still doing, it's still a family activity. <laughs> it is, it is. And I mean, he is a big part of it. And, um, like I said, it's all him. I mean, sometimes about the only thing that I come up with are maybe the names of, of some things or, and sometimes the design, but the characters, you know, the main design is all him. I'll so, tweak. I'll tweak what he gives me, and then we'll come to an agreement. So does he like give you like a sketch, and then you go from there? Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. It, it's, it's 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 
a wild a wild thing. I wish I could record just how we how we do this thing. <laughs> I mean, it's a show on all of its own. I just like run around playing, and then I'm like, oh, this is a cool idea. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what he does. He'll be upstairs playing Legos, and all of a sudden, I hear running down the stairs, and I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> that's and funny. Have some kind of crazy idea. I can I could relate to that because that's what happens to me. I get these random ideas in my head, and I just have to write them down before I forget them. Yeah. <laughs> and then my wife usually it's funny because I'll I'll be at that dinner. We'll be sitting down to dinner or whatever it might be, and then I'll be like, I'll tell my wife, you know, oh honey, listen, I just had the greatest idea, and then I'll tell her this idea, and she knows like, okay, what is this going to be? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but to her credit, she listens. <laughs> Yeah, my wife is, is really good about that, too. So I mean, it's, it's nice to have somebody like that that will just go, OK. <laughs> um, so then would you consider like were you thinking about putting some of the original sketches in the book? Oh, uh, that's a possibility. I mean, I haven't really thought about it. I mean, a lot of this, like I said, it started back when he was three. So about nine years ago. So. You know, throughout time, I think we had to find some of the original stuff. I found, um, I put on my Twitter, I can't remember how many days ago, it was like, this is where we started and this is where we're at right now. And it's just like a vast difference of, you know, of what it looked like. Because the first sketch I did was just a quick drawing and I added some color to it just so that he would have like what he saw in his mind, he would actually have it to where he could look at it and go, okay, that's Phil Man and Blanket Boy. Right. And um, that thing, I, I forgot where we found it. It was, it was stuff somewhere. It was, this is all it was like up. in my closet and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was in, or in my like sock drawer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like weird. <laughs> Well, listen, I mean, you know, it's a pillow, it's a blanket. It should be in a drawer. There you go. <laughs> I really like the pillowcase now. Yeah, the pillowcase is nice. I was just going to say that, too, because I saw on the campaign, like, you actually have one of the one of the perks as a pillowcase. It, 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 yeah, he actually sleeps with it. It's, um, I don't know what, what made us think of it. It was like, you know, it's a pillow. Why don't we just make a pillowcase? I've never seen anybody. And it's like double sided, yeah. so it has the two faces, so you can do whichever one you want. It's like battle and then and normal. normal. Yeah, it, it was just something different because I've never seen anybody do something like that. I've seen you know bookmarks and right and figures and stuff like that. I was like, well, heck, he's a pillow. Why don't okay. you know, have a pillowcase? You, you could do a thing where it's his blanket too. Oh yeah, well that's. We'll talk about that later <laughs> on. <laughs> Maybe for the, the 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 next comic on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Listen, keep that in mind. Like we do it on Kickstarter or, or not Kickstarter, but Indiegogo again. Yeah. yeah. Of the blanket. Probably. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a great idea. I, I thought when I saw the pillowcase, I was I really I was like, wow, that's a great idea. Like it's so perfect just for the branding, for the character, for the way it, it just works so well. Oh man, I was very surprised by how well it came out. I forgot where I'd got it from. I think it was like Zazzle or something like that. And I was very surprised that it came out looking as good as it did. I mean, the pictures don't do it justice. I mean, to actually have it, I mean, the colors are vibrant. I was I, I was very happy with it. And that's that's who I'm going through to uh, fulfill that perk. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, and it's just a great idea too, because nobody else is doing a pillowcase. So. No, no. No. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a pillowcase like as a goal thing, like a, a perk. No. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> We're blazing the trails. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Honestly, just from a pragmatic standpoint, it works really well too because you can put it in the same, you know, it's not like a figure or something like that where you need to put it in a bigger box or anything like that. Like a pillowcase will fold up and go right in the same box as a comic book. Yeah, and it's extra protection for the comic too. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Put the comic inside of the thing. It's like a it's like a steel of authenticity. There you go. <laughs> Maybe we should take it on a on trick or treating this year to let everybody to do some, you know, promotion. Yeah. Viral marketing, yeah. <laughs> So now, um, talking about the art, I was surprised, honestly, when I when I looked at your campaign, um, and, it, and you said that this was the first book you've done. Yes, because um, the art's really good. <laughs> I appreciate that. I was, I was, I have been nervous because I started this. I think it was about eight or nine months ago, and you know, I'm not an artist. Um, I don't even pretend to be one. I just draw 
whatever. And it took me a while to even get it, to put it out there to show people because I was like, man, they're going to look at this and they're going to be just like, yeah, this guy, this guy cannot sell a comic. So, I mean, it took a while. It took my wife to finally talk me into it and um, just to get over that stage fright of getting it out there. And there's, I still look back at it from the earlier pages and there's stuff that I, I want to change before I actually, you know, do finally print the comic and whatnot. But um, I've been pretty happy with it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's just crazy to see. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I look no, like I said, I, I think the art's really good. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, and when you put it, you know, the, the thing about it is, is and, and I think honestly, like I go through the same thing and I post some of my art on Instagram and on Twitter and stuff. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, uh, I, I have a lot of the same, I always had a lot of that, like, eh, is it really good? Should I put it out there? People are going to be like, oh, this is terrible. What are, you know, <laughs> But then I kind of got just, I kind of like, it sounds silly to say, but like, I kind of just got over it. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah. now I am. I mean, pretty much I'm just like, I'll put anything out there now. But at right. first, it's like, okay. But well, yeah. I, th I think what helped me was actually sharing a lot of my old stuff that I drew when I was a kid that I really have no, like, you know, someone can look at the stuff that I drew when I was a kid and they can say, oh God, that's terrible. Like that person has no neck or that's like what yeah. it's not going to affect me in any way, shape or form. Like it's not going to bother. It's not going to hurt my ego. It's not going to bother me because I know like that stuff I drew when I was like 12, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I, I think it was Edwin. Um, he, he did something about two or three weeks ago and he had it on his uh, channel where, you know, he was talking about indie comics and he actually, cause I had, I had, um, uh, emailed him or not emailed him, but uh, probably messaged him on, um, I think it was Reddit and told him, you know, this is a comic that I, you know, me and my son had come up with and stuff like that. And, you know, he asked a little bit of questions about it and then that was it. And then I started putting stuff out and I, and I finally went on to the Indiegogo campaign and he, he brought it up on his website one day or his um, YouTube channel and started talking about it. And he was like, he was very surprised, but he said he was very surprised by the art because he had, you know, he remembers hearing about it, but he didn't really think about it. But it, it, he was just very surprised by how well it, you know, well, how good it looked and how well it was for, you know, being the first comic and stuff like that. And then that was right there was like when I was just surprised. I was like, wow, somebody actually thinks it looks good. So that really helped boost the confidence. Right, right. Well, like I said, I, I was honestly, when I first saw the art, I was like, oh, this looks good. And then I realized, like, then I read and I'm like, Wow, this guy this guy sounds like me. First of all, like he didn't draw for twenty years, and then he started drawing again. <laughs> like that sounds just like me. I'm like, but this is good. Like this guy, like I assumed honestly when I first saw it, I was like, oh okay, this is a guy who probably has done like some indie works. Maybe like you know a few you know a few years back he did some indie books or whatever, and now he's going to do a project with his son. That's cool. Like I honestly couldn't did not know that this was until I read that this was your first book. Yeah, yeah. So now. I I was, well, I was going to say, and when I first heard the concept, now I'm, I don't know if you, if anyone said this to you before or not, but when I first heard the concept of that you were doing a book inspired, like inspired by and with your son, uh, my first thought was Axe Cop. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's exactly right. It, a lot of people have said that, and I actually got in touch. I cannot remember his name off. I think his name is Ethan. Yeah, Ethan Nicole. Yeah, and he actually backed us. He was like, Did I, he? Think, I think he was like number four, number five. He he. He backed us and I was like, well, dang, okay, I'll take that. That's all awesome. right. I sent him a link and I was like, look, you know, everybody's comparing this to Axe Cop and, you know, can you take a look at it? Just, you know, maybe, you know, put it out there on social media that you looked at it and all that. And then I get a, a, um, a thing from him and I'm like, okay, I'll take this. So yeah, that, that, no, that's great. Yeah, I was very surprised and, and I was very happy at the same time. That's fantastic. And that's, I mean, that's a thing that for him turned into something huge. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And a lot of people, you know, when they first hear Pillow Man and Blanket Boy, they think, oh, you know, it's a kid's comic. It's, you know, just for kids and stuff like that. And it's going to be something like Captain Underpants and stuff like that. And, right. it, and it's really not, it's in the same line. I like to tell people like the tick cartoon from the nineties and, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Axe Cop and, and stuff like that. I, it, yeah, it is written, co-written by a child, and 
um, it's his creation, but it's not just for little kids. It's we wanted to get back to like the silver age of comics where you have a good guy, a bad guy, they fight comic book fun, you know, the end. And right. that's, that's how we wanted to do it. We didn't want to have any, you know, social undertones or anything like that. We just wanted just good, or clean blood. comic book fun. Yeah. You know, no like blood, no war. nudity, right. you know, no cursing, nothing like that. And, you know, we, you know, not only will kids like it, but, you know, adults will enjoy it as well. Like uh, Robin with the G Wilker. No, nothing like that. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> yeah, no, but that's the thing. Like, I think a lot of comics nowadays, they kind of miss the mark when they're trying to make something quote unquote, all ages. Um, a lot of times, you know, in, in what will be pitched as an all ages book is really like a kiddie book. Yes. Um, you know, and, and then the one person who I've seen actually are, you know, uh, who seems to get it right is, uh, Alterna with their all ages books. Yes. Um, their books, like something like mighty mascots, like mm -hmm. anyone can read that book. Yep. You know, that's a fun book and anyone can read it and it looks good. Um, and it tells a fun story, but there's nothing, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Any, anyone can read it and you could read it as an adult and enjoy it. And you can read it as a kid and enjoy it. Yeah, that's what that's what we were hoping for. And I think that kind of hurt us at the beginning because a lot of people were thinking that it was just all, you know, just for little kids and stuff like that. And they would, you know, when they would blast it on Twitter, they would, you know, kind of misrepresent it as just, you know, a, a, a comic just for kids and stuff like that. And I was like, wait a minute, you, you are getting this wrong. Right. Uh, maybe I didn't explain it well enough. So, you know, we went back to drawing board on that and it seems like everybody's got the understanding now but yeah it's just like we don't want it just to be little kids we want it to be how comics used to be right well that was the thing like comics used to be you know adults would say oh comics those are for kids but then kids would read comics because they you know like they would be drawn to certain comics not because it looked like something really kiddy you know, I, I never wanted to read a really kitty comic. I didn't want to read, you know, like I didn't read Archie or anything like that. Cause that just looked too silly to me. Yes. Like, I read Spider-Man. I read, you know, superhero stories because I wanted the action and the adventure and the scary, you know, the little bit of scariness of the bad guys and all that. Like, that's what I wanted. That's, that's right. I mean, um, cause when we go to comic shops, I can tell you, my son is about the only child I see in there. And it's, it's kind of scary because I know adults buy more adults buy comics now, but what's going to happen when there are no more adults that are buying them? What, I mean, right. I think we need to start getting back to basics of, Hey, we, we need children to get back into comics or this industry is actually going to, to die. Oh yeah. I mean, because I mean, they're watching the movies. I mean, they know who the characters are, but they're not in the, in the stores buying comics. They're, they're just getting their comics from, What's on the big screen? Right. Well, that yeah, that's just it for them. Uh, the it's funny because I remember again, like going back to when I was younger. Uh, you know, if they made a superhero movie or or anything, I would immediately judge it by how close it was to the comic book. That's exactly right. You know, <laughs> but now it's irrelevant. Nobody even knows what happens in the comic book. They're just watching the movies. Yep, that's that's right. <laughs> that's right. So I mean, you know, our goal is to get this into the hands of children but i mean you know we 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 want it in everybody's hands we want everybody to have pillow man and blanket boy and that's it, it's that's one of the things like i i feel like that the mainstream has really hurt in the long run is you know as somebody who has a kid and you know, my daughter has, you know, when she was growing up, she, you know, I mean, not, not that she's an adult now, but, you know, <laughs> when she was, you know, as she was growing up, she would read things like she read, you know, Captain Underpants and she would read Diary of a Wimpy Kid and mm -hmm. you know, she would read that stuff. And she would even read some graphic novels that were more girl centric. But, you know, sure. um, but the idea of, you know what, I'm going to take her to the comic book store and we're going to find something that, you know, that she can that she's going to like that she'll maybe she'll want to read, you know, Wonder Woman or maybe she'll, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah. I don't even as an, like as an adult, as a parent, I don't even feel like I can bring her in there and find something. It, it, it's true. I mean, the same thing with him. I mean, we'll go, but there's really nothing there that I, 
am comfortable with him really reading anymore. He, he he just goes in there and looks up the figures now. I mean, it used to be, yeah, we want to get, you know, Batman or Superman or something like that, but it's just become insane here recently. And in the last few years, it's gotten worse and worse. I mean, it's like, well, what are, what is this person? Are they going to be, you know, I don't know. I mean, what, who's writing this and how much do they hate, you know, the people that we are and stuff like right. that is crazy. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. I just had a, a conversation with my wife uh, yesterday. Uh, a friend of hers is doing a, a charity fundraiser uh, in our area uh, for like a, a pet uh, charity that she does. She's always doing stuff for them. And they're going to have, I'm not going to say who it is, but they're going to have uh, uh, an artist there, um, a Marvel artist. And she she was texting me. She goes, oh, who do you know who so-and-so from Marvel is? Um, you know, he's going to be at the fundraiser. And I, you know, I just did a real quick, I, it wasn't somebody that I really knew well. So I'm like, let me just, real, let, just, just out of curiosity, let me go look at his Twitter page. <laughs> so I went and I looked at the Twitter page and then I just texted my wife back. I said, yeah, I don't think this is someone who's going to like me very much. Exactly. Yeah. I've lost so much respect for a lot of artists that I really enjoyed when I was growing up and, you know, even in my adult life, just because their Twitter feed and stuff like that and their personal politics. And it's just like, wow. I mean, I've been on the receiving end of a blockchain on a lot of them too. Oh, yeah. and, I mean, it's just like, what has happened to these people? What, what happened to just drawing comics and just being quiet? Just, <laughs> just <laughs> what do, is, do your job. The funny thing is, is I don't even care if you're not quiet, but they're loud about the wrong things. Like Exactly. I, I did a whole rant on yesterday. It was yes, not yesterday, the day, day before. I did a whole rant. I was driving home from work, and I was like, I got to do a video about this. And I started talking about people, literally comic pros, complaining. I, I heard that one, yeah. That someone said they should be promoting their own work. <laughs> yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, what? Yeah, it's insane. I was literally, I'm driving home, and I swear, like, the people in traffic must have thought I was nuts because I was driving in the car, and I'm, like, getting loud in the car because I was getting so worked up about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that tweet, and, I mean, it was just like, wow. That, that, I, I'm, everybody wishes that they could have that, but, you know. Like, it's just, it's crazy to me that you've got, like, if you're working on, a character that has this huge legacy and this huge following, you know, you're working on any, any character at Marvel or DC, it doesn't matter. Um, you still need to promote. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, and, and honestly, you have more of a responsibility because you need to treat the character properly and you need to promote. Yeah. Treating the character properly is something that is needs to go back to basics as well too, because they've really lost a lot of characters and what they really are versus what they are now. I mean, it's like some of the characters you don't even, I mean, it's just somebody else wearing, you say the bat suit or Spider -Man oh, yeah. outfit. I mean, it's like, this is not, I was, I, 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 for years and years and years have had, was a huge Spider-Man fan and just collected the comic for years. And, you know, and it's funny cause I don't usually say collected cause I, I always feel like it's, that's a weird word. Like <laughs> I, I, I read them. You know, like that was the thing. I would buy them and read them and look forward to it every month, reading the next one and reading the next one. And for me with Spider-Man, when they when they undid the marriage that I was done. Yeah, that's when that's when they lost a lot of people, a lot of people like that. And instantly I was done at that point. And I feel like it's funny because now there's all this talk about um with the movies now that that Spider-Man won't be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe anymore and blah, blah, blah. There's all this talk. Like, there's a lot of people print, putting out like photoshops of like Tobey Maguire back in the, in the <laughs> suit and all that kind of stuff. And part of me is almost like, you know what? Maybe they should do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like maybe they should go ahead and, and, and put Tobey back in the suit and let's get an old Peter Parker, not old, but you know, an older an adult Peter Parker married and living that life because that was for me a huge portion of you know my life was him with mary jane and reading that relationship exactly exactly and i mean 
MCU just, uh, I didn't feel like he was the real Spider-Man in the MCU. I thought he was more Iron Boy. Oh, know, yeah. Just not the real one. Uh, J- Jeremy Lotz in the chat, he said, you think Dunst would go for it? I don't know. <laughs> How's her acting uh, career right now? I mean, I know she does. I just saw her in an ad for something on, I don't know if it was on Hulu or whatever it was. She's got some show somewhere. Oh, wow. Uh, but she might do it. You never know. What is Toby doing now? I, wonder. I have no idea. He was a good Spider-Man. Yeah, he Except was. The, the, the emo Spider-Man. Emo Peter. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he was good, and and you know what's funny is I actually I I joke around with uh, you might get a kick out of this. We we joke around in our family that we actually are the least known Spider-Man villains in the world because. One day, while we were driving through Manhattan, we almost ran over Toby McGuire. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> we, he was he was running across the street in the middle of traffic, and like, thankfully we weren't. I mean, it was like you know there was it's Manhattan, so there's traffic. You're not yeah. you're not going very fast, but like we were driving, and all of a sudden this guy just like kind of like jumps off the hood of the car, and my wife and I just looked at each other and we're like. Is that Toby McGuire? <laughs> He's not it's Spider Man no more. It's probably the weirdest thing you could say in the car. Is that Toby McGuire? Yeah, it was so bizarre. <laughs> like, who's that guy? I think, I think we just saw Toby McGuire. <laughs> But that's why I, I joke around. I say we're the least known and probably the least threatening Spider-Man villains in the world. <laughs> Who needs a Green Goblin? We got two people in a car. <laughs> Who needs the Green Goblin when you have a green Kia? You know. <laughs> Stanley's like, that's a great idea. <laughs> Listen, that might wind. Up, that's going to wind up in a book like in a month now. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we did that, and then they would put out. Yeah, they would. Someone killed. sorry. No, no, no. But yeah, we did that, and then we actually we have kind of a weird uh, in our in our family for whatever reason we have this kind of strange relationship with with Spider Man on the big screen. Like I said, we almost hit Tobey Maguire with our car, and if my daughter is listening, she's going to be really mad at me for telling the story. But yeah. we, uh, my daughter, uh, she acts. And she w- she's actually in Amazing Spider-Man 2. As a- she was just an extra. Um, oh, wow. And the day she was on set, they were on a, they were on a uh, carousel for hours and hours and hours <laughs> just filming this scene. And when she was done, she, was, she got motion sick. And it turned out, I thought it was motion sickness. It turned out she actually got a stomach virus. But... As we were walking off set, we were behind Andrew Garfield, and my my poor daughter just started throwing up. Oh no! <laughs> so yeah, we have a, we have a complicated history with Spider Man on screen. <laughs> Any Tom Holland stories? No, 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 none. That's the one we haven't gotten to yet. <laughs> <laughs> Give it time. Yeah, we'll get to him eventually. <laughs> okay, you need to go over there with a hammer. Just just go over to wherever he is. Why with a hammer? What do you want to do with a hammer? Drop it from a thing and pretend like you just dropped the hammer oh, on him. Okay. <laughs> You're talking about killing people. Jesus. No, no. no you just... This interview just went dark. <laughs> I'm afraid to sleep in this house now. You're going to pretend to drop a hammer on me? Well, listen, at least you'll have that pillowcase for protection. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, it, it's just funny. Yeah, so my daughter, in fact, it's funny because, you know, my daughter is a 13 year old girl, so she really wants to have a Tom Holland story. But <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they'll make a third movie. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> they can do an Into the Spider Verse live action. Yeah, that would That'd be, be cool. Yeah. That, that would be, be yeah. They, they could do that and bring back Garfield and Maguire. You could have him as the older Peter Parker from yeah. the thing because he looks like. He, he's yeah, he's older. He's older yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could have all three of them in there. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Well, that's like they're doing that. Um, the Crisis on Infinite Earths, Earths thing. I just said Earths. <laughs> <laughs> the Crisis on Infinite Infinite Earths, uh, thing that they're doing on the CW with all their their DC characters. They're pulling out everybody. I mean, they have Adam. What's his name? Not Adam West, but uh, Burt Ward coming back as Robin. Yep. And I, I, I saw their work, and I don't know if it was ever made official, but there were talks about Linda Carter coming back to be Wonder Woman. 
Yeah. I think the guy who played Batman on the animated series yeah, is going to be Batman. Be, yeah, he's going to be Bruce Wayne, old Bruce yeah. Wayne. But I know that, uh, is it Brandon Routh is going to be Superman again yeah. in it? And I mean, just everything. And it's like, it would be cool if it wasn't on the CW. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, if it was anywhere else, so I mean, we, we would watch the, the Flash. I mean, we watched it for like the first two or three seasons. And then it was like, well, how many, I don't know if you've ever seen the show. Mm -hmm. It's like, how many times can one person walk to a hallway and another person goes, walks over there because they have something that they have to talk about. It's like every episode, I say once every 10 minutes, somebody has got to tell somebody something. So they walk away and it's like this, you know, they've got the, the little dr dramatic music going and it's like, okay, this is sappy. I just want to see him run and fight somebody right. like the old nineties flash TV show. I don't care about the drama and all that. That, that show drama. was good. Yeah, the not yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it was <laughs> yeah. back during the um, Michael Keaton Batman, so oh, yeah, that that's why weird. his suit looked like that. But it was it was phenomenal because you had Mark Hamill as the trickster. Yep. Oh, so, really? And I think are they bringing him back for this too? I, you or, know, they, they I did see something about Mark Hamill. I don't know if they're, that's what they're doing or not. Yeah, there were so many names. Yeah, I mean, it was because I think what's her face is going to come back. Uh, what is her name? Helen. What's her name? Who played Supergirl in the in the movie? Oh Helen, God, really? I thought that I had heard that. Oh, I might God. be wrong. I don't know. I mean, you know, I just get little bits of information here and there, but I mean, it would fit in with everything else. Well, I mean, the funny thing—I mean, it sounds sad to say. It's, it sounds terrible to say it, but a lot of these people. They can't be doing much, so it can't be that hard to get them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's funny, though. Um, my daughter, it, it, like, we don't really watch too many of the CW shows because they're just, I don't know, like. They're sappy. Yeah, yeah. But, like, what was really funny when I told my daughter that they're talking about putting uh, Linda Carter as Wonder Woman, she got super excited because we watched the old Wonder Woman. Uh, it's on, like, where we live, it's on every Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Oh, wow. And she, we watch it every week. She loves it. Oh yeah, I used to, I used to enjoy it. I mean, I would see reruns because it came out probably before I was born. But I mean, I used to love that. That the Incredible Hulk. Um, oh reruns, yeah. You know the Batman and Robin reruns. I mean, it was I, when I was growing up. That's all that we had for comic. You know, comic movies, comic TV shows. Oh yeah. Now it's like you know every other day there's something coming out with comics. Well, I remember. I mean. I remember that with you know the Incredible Hulk after the show was over they did like those they did those TV movies <laughs> with Daredevil and, and Daredevil. Well, yeah that was weird. it was like spray paint well, like they painted it it's well like, yeah I mean they didn't have CGI yeah. at the time so. but it's funny because it looks like a guy just like green it's that's, a green man I guess what that's exactly what it was <laughs> yeah. the Hulk. yep I forgot a piece of paint hold on for a second yeah. <laughs> And he had like white pants. Sorry. One no, point. no, it's all good. <laughs> what? White pants at one point. Probably. <laughs> I always used to laugh at like the one thing I never understood. And this is again, this is comic books. So you like, I hate when people try to get too literal about stuff in comics. But the one thing that I always was like, how do Bruce Banner's pants fit <laughs> when he becomes the Hulk? <laughs> like, I mean, I know they rip and everything, but how does the waist fit? <laughs> he has a special tailor. Like, are they like elastic? You know, <laughs> <laughs> have to be. I mean, geez. Because I mean, really, Bruce Banner's waist has got to be like a thirty, and the Hulk's waist is like you know a hundred and two or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Doctor Strange came up with some kind of magic pants for him. <laughs> <laughs> that was always the, that was always my thing with the Hulk. Is how do his pants stay on? <laughs> They're like. No, you do, you do not ask those questions. Right, right. plastic man, where yeah. his suit thing can like stretch mm -hmm. with him. Yeah, it would have to be something like that. Hmm. Either that, or like I said, he bought he bought the ones with the elastic in the waist. You know, okay. those are for the people who eat too much at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's wearing the pregnancy pants. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Hulk shops at a maternity store. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. <laughs> Jesus. Hulk need pants. <laughs> Do you 
You have them in purple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the other thing. What was with the purple pants? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, really, this big guy wants purple? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 get, I get the color, you know, the purple and the green, like, you know, from a color perspective, it makes sense. But like, who's got purple pants? <laughs> a clown and the Hulk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I had no idea when we started this that we'd be talking about the Hulk's pants. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody else will when they're listening back on it or watching it live. <laughs> they're like, wait a minute, what? What is going on here? Are they all high? What are they doing? <laughs> oh my gosh. No, so I want to show since we're here, like I'll try to let's let's try to I'll try to get us back on track. <laughs> <laughs> let's do uh I'm gonna just show uh I'll share the screen. And we'll show there's the campaign. And you see there's eight hours left. Um, like you said, probably not going to hit it, but that's okay. Because like any good hero, Pillow Man and Blanket Boy will be back. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to show, just for anybody who's watching, we were talking about the art. And I just wanted to show people what the art looks like. And like this one right here, this now is th this is the cover, right? Yeah, it is. It is. And I want to tell you, uh, my colorist does a tremendous job. That's the one thing that I don't do is the coloring. Um, okay. uh, Zane from Inzane Comics actually got me in touch with, um, his name is Rajis, and he is a phenomenal colorist. I mean, he, he's in, he lives in India, and um, he does... I mean, just great. I mean, he, he does such a great job. I mean, I'll give him a page or two pages and I'll get them back within a day. And it's just like, wow, the guy is a workhorse. I mean, he is just, I don't know how he does it, but he just helps take, you know, my, my drawings and just makes them look like this. I mean, it's <laughs> fantastic work. Yeah. I, it's funny. I was talking um, just the other day, I was talking about how, colors see now like look at this like this is quality art like i know you said you like you weren't sure but like dude this is good <laughs> you won't believe how long it took me to draw the first page i mean i it's like every idea that i had i would i would scrap it a lot of these pages they've been redrawn probably like i think the least amount of times about 20 times i mean until uh, i'm happy with it and like this one right here took me forever until i was finally ready with that final design there. I mean, the city, the city probably took me the longest out of it. How many, like all the lights and stuff. It took you like a few days. Yeah. To just do the city days. right there. Yeah. It, it was, it was insane. Well, that's what, honestly, like I look at that panel on top with the cityscape and it just gives me nightmares because like, I can't even like draw, like drawing that had to be just, I mean, it had yeah. to take forever. It did. It did. And a little bit longer, like I said, I'm not a comic artist, so a page takes me probably, you know, a few days to do. I, th I think the best I did was like three pages in a week. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did three pages. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but like, I mean, and you said you work digitally. So at least the nice thing is, is once you're done, uh, you can send it right off. And the bad thing is about the first page, um, you know, I made a rookie mistake after I um, drew it. Somehow, the original got erased. Oh, so really? I have the first page is actually a copy that I luckily had just of you know a JPEG instead of you know like the actual file where it has right. the layers and stuff like that. So that's the one page that I've, I I'm like I go back and look and I'm like okay hopefully there's no big errors because if there are I'm gonna have to redraw the whole thing. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and after I did that, I was like, I make sure that I, you know, do everything right after I draw. <laughs> because I'm like, I am not losing another page like that. That's crazy. Yeah. That had to be scary, honestly. <laughs> it, it was. It was. It was very scary. Now, this is our villain, right? Right here? That is actually um, a bot for um, Maximum Velocity. He okay. He doesn't come out there and do 
you know, the dirty work. He sends in bots and then he's got different waves of bots. This is the first wave of bots. And then he's got a second wave and then he's got a big mech that he brings in at the end. Nice. <laughs> These are like the ones that go in to try to get the secret weapon that he's looking for. But the thing is, is that, you know, we have a secret weapon, but it's not really the, you know, everybody wants to know what it is, but it's not really detrimental to the story. It's kind of like our MacGuffin of gotcha. like, we want people to go, what's that secret weapon? But it's not really that important. Right. I love the design on the bot. I, I love that. Yeah. I wanted to go a little bit nineties on that because that's basically the era that I grew up in, you know, reading comics was the nineties and I wanted to kind of give it a nineties vibe to it. Cause you know, it seems to be like, a lot of people are looking back at the nineties now and it's like, you know what? It wasn't as bad as everybody says it is. Uh huh. And so it's true. it is. And you know, you're seeing a lot more of the nineties artists come back and become big again. I mean, you got Rob, I feel, you know, back at Marvel and you know, his major X is like selling out. You know, oh yeah. Place. And Tom yeah, no. Arlene's doing his 300 spawn issue. I mean, yes. And you can actually find issues one through 299 of that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's true though. Like a lot of these guys, I mean, listen, if you told me that uh, the one thing that would probably get me tempted to go back and buy a, like a, a Marvel comic or something would be if you told me Jim Lee was going to draw an issue of the X-Men again or something, you know, exactly, exactly. I would, I would have to at least think about it, you know, um, even just, just recently they did the, um, uh, the Spider Man was a Spider Man's life story thing with Chip Zdarsky was writing it, and it was um, Mark Bagley doing the art. Yes, and I always I know some people don't particularly like everybody kind of remembers McFarlane and Larson, and then Bagley, and like everyone kind of forgets about Bagley. I feel like, but oh, for me, yeah. for me, I love Mark Bagley's art. Oh yeah, I mean he was he was the one that was working when Carnage was first when yes. first came out, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. And then, you know, ultimate Spider-Man was his, I mean, good Lord. How many issues did he do for ultimate Spider-Man? Right. And that's why I like, I love his. So when they said he was doing that, that first issue of that, I was really tempted. <laughs> oh yeah. But then, uh, yeah. And I've seen some people say it's good. Some people say it's not. And it's just like, I don't want to get involved with that. Yeah. Well that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the other thing is, is I would much rather, like okay it's it's kind of like you're just retelling his i'd rather see something wholly original exactly exactly and you know the, i think the last one was isn't it uh, like he's like an older guy now in like 2019 and it's like he's at the end of you know being spider-man or something like that i, I believe. believe so yeah yeah so yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I think the concept was like a real-time approach to his story so he started in the 60s and then grew he broke you know. a hip in 2019 and his Spider-Man career was over. Right. So then here we have our heroes. Yeah. I, I've, like I said, um, like it says on the thing, I've skipped some pages through there just to get, you know, some of the, you know, just to, I didn't want to put all the art out there, but yeah, yeah this is when we first see our, our heroes, Pillman Man and Blanket Boy. And um, like my little works. panel up there was kind of like my little throwback to, um, kind of like a Frank Miller Batman kind of thing where it's like his face is in shadow, but you uh -huh. can see like the gritting teeth and stuff like that. And then I like, you know, blanket boy there. He looks like a little, little boy. I mean, he has a little boy in a, in a blanket, but then he comes up and just smashes the guy's head open. So now just as, as far as like blanket boy and pillow man for that matter, what are like, what are their powers? Like what can they actually do? Well, um, Blanket Boy, his power comes from his his blanket. I mean, it, it's alive. I mean, basically, kind of like you know how Spawn's cape is. His, his blanket is is like that. Without his blanket, he's just you know a child. Also, Doctor Strange is in the MCU is kind of like that. Exactly. Except it doesn't like. Yeah, go grow and stuff, grow and stuff like that. And you know, uh, Pillman is basically like your Superman archetype. He has the plasma vision, which we call it plasma with three z's you know he, he has um sleep breath he can fly as super strength but um he is powered by the golden feather it's a um it's a medieval thing that's been around for years and and it's been a protector of the world but in this day and age his incarnation is a superhero 
Okay, so if we were to go back in time, he might have been a knight or something like that. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Draw that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because um, down at the bottom, you'll see him in his final form to where it's his last resort. He if he can't if he can't um, you know what is it he 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 morphs into this this being, and you'll see at the very the very very end. But um, he uses the the power of the of the golden feather to um, to harness all of his power to destroy whatever he's going up against. And this in this um, the last panel, he's going up against the big bot there that he that it has every right there. Yeah, right there. But he uses that power to destroy or try to destroy the bot because he's tried all the other means that he has. And if he can't do it, then that's what he uses as his last resort. And that uses every power that he has. And um, one guy the other other night said something like Ultraman. You know, he would have like, he would use that last power and then he would have like a cool down period. And right. that's basically how it is with Pillman and Blanket Boy. They have these powers, but it's not infinite. It's like if, Pill if uh, Blanket Boy, if he has to use his power to its extreme, he gets wrapped in a pillow cocoon. To, or a blanket cocoon where it protects him. But then okay. if that happens and he cannot use his power for an amount of time after that. So they're they're vulnerable at that time. Same thing with, with pillow man there. If he uses that power, that last remaining power, then he gets reduced just to a pillowcase. Oh, okay. <laughs> He'll eventually get his power back. But at that time he is vulnerable because we, we didn't want to have our superheroes to just be all powerful. Nothing can hurt them. They do this and they save the day and da da da. da. It gets boring. So we wanted to give them something that's like, you know what? They they are all powerful, but guess what? If they use this one last power to do whatever they 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 need to do, they sacrifice themselves for that short amount of time. Then they have to have that that cooldown period. That then yes, they can be destroyed because if he loses the golden feather, then he is no more. That's what's given him the power. Right. So that means, you know, it, it gives more tension to the story. It gives an ability for, for the heroes to be defeated, which you need. Yes. You know, you have to have that. Otherwise, where's the tension? Exactly. And, you know, a lot of people talk about Superman like that. That's like, yeah, we know he's going to do this and we know he's going to do that. But I mean, if you don't have kryptonite, then you can't kill him. Right. But the big thing in this story is, is that they're going, they're trying to help the the old guy from the beginning because um, he works at that, that warehouse where uh, maximum velocity is breaking in to try to find the secret weapon. And he gets or velocity one, not maximum velocity. That's the name of it. Sorry. The velocity one breaks in to try to get the secret weapon. And the old guy, he is his last night before he retires, you know, goes off traveling the country with his wife, but um, he gets caught up in this whole thing right here. And so now pillow man and blanket boy came to save them, but then and save him. But in that time he gets taken by velocity ones in his, in his, in his bot. So now they have to go search out and try to find him before they kill him. Okay. And now this is the mech you're talking about. Yeah. The big mech down there. And then you got velocity one up there as well. And he, he's, you see that, like the page before this, I think it was, they've got the the old guy, like, um, or before this one, they've got the old guy hooked up and right. they're probing it. Uh, they're probing his mind to try to figure out where that weapon is. So you see the, mem he, he's showing the memories of like velocity one is going in to try to find exactly where in that building where they were, where that secret weapon is. And so that's what they're doing right there is probing his mind. Right, so they're just trying to find out where this weapon is, exactly. so that he can use it for whatever nefarious purpose he has. And and you eventually do find out, like, there is an epilogue that will tie into because this is just a one shot. The big meat of the story is in the next series, Closet of Doom, which is even bigger because um, we find out who um, Pillman's. Um, greatest enemy is, which is, um, Buckethead. <laughs> you got Buckethead, you've got, what was his name? Um, Shadowcaster, you got, um, Eye Master, and then you got the Closet of Doom. Cause if the Closet of Doom gets into power, 
he will he will take the world and send it into a nightmare realm because you know every kid is afraid of the closet right that and makes from, sense and from that came the closet of doom and so if it gets if the world gets plunged into the closet then everybody will see their nightmares living out and you know to them right and yeah the closet doom has been around for years but um the thing is is that he is the closet of doom is separated into different parts of the the world and there is actually a corporation that that works to keep him separated because once the closet of doom is taken and put together again there's nothing we can do he will take over the world and so the secret weapon is actually a piece of him that velocity one has been looking for because you'll find out that um, he was hired by Buckethead to get this piece for him because he's searching for the Closet of Doom so he can take over the world. Okay. So I like the idea. Like you guys really, it's funny because <laughs> you guys have like a really big mythology already. Like, well, it's, it's been nine years in the making. I mean, <laughs> like I said, this, this kid will <laughs> just come up with stuff. And it's, I mean, I have, I have problems keeping up with his mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not i'm not young anymore and you know he's just running around telling me stuff and i'm just like what 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 is, what <laughs> what is happening what is happening here why is someone exploding <laughs> into a giant a robot yeah <laughs> yeah i love yeah. i love the idea too also it just thematically it just plays so well the idea of who has to save you know humanity from being plunged into a nightmare realm but a hero a, a pair of heroes who are a pillow and a blanket like you know. <laughs> it all ties in and yeah and, no it's great and, and with this comic um we didn't want to get into the the whole backstory the whole mythology because we wanted to have something where it 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 got you right from the first page and it'll lead you all the way to the the last page and we didn't want to get into you know this is how it began and this is blah 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 and the origin and the and origins stuff. of stuff we want that to be the next go around we wanted this just to get people to know this is pillow man and blanket boy this is what they do blah 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 so we wanted to sh save that for the next go around and and you know we will get to the next go around after this one i mean it's just too much for us just to sit and just be between me and him right can't even sit down for 12 minutes. No. Nope. <laughs> now, what, um, just out of curiosity, what, like, what was the determining factor for you to decide, okay, we can, uh, we want to make a comic together. We could just make one on our own and just have it for us and just, you know, do something at, at home. Um, or we could put this out into the world and, and try and make something real of it. Like, what was the impetus to actually go that route? I just thought it was too good just to let it sit between us. I mean, <laughs> looking at the, like, like we talked about the comic industry. I mean, I started watching, you know, uh, Zach and then uh, Ethan Van Skyver. And I was just like, you know what? I see these guys doing it. Why can't we do it? And it was like, you know, I think these stories, I think, you know, not only will we like it, we think a lot of other people will like it. And we think even children will like it. I mean, it'll give them, you know, something to read, something to get them back in the comics and, and stuff like that. But like I said, I just think it's too good of a story just to have between us. Well, I think, I think again, like we were talking earlier, this is the kind of thing that if you are a, an adult and you're a fan of comic books, this is the kind of thing that you would buy, you would read it, and then you would share it with your, you know, with your kid, your niece, your nephew, whoever it might be. And that's how, you know, this is how kids get into these things a lot of the time is through their parents. Parents expose them to things and then either they like it or they don't. But that's how, you know, when you hand a kid a comic book, unless they're going to go somewhere and, and buy a comic, which what kid is going to randomly go out and buy a comic because you can't find them anywhere unless you go to a comic book store. Yeah, exactly. You know, a kid is never even going to randomly come across a comic like we used to do. So... Uh, it's uh, it's honestly it's up to the adults who who love the medium who want it to continue to then share it with their kids like i said nieces nephews whomever and and this is the kind of book that would be a great one i feel like would be a great one to share because it's appropriate for everybody but it's not dumbed down it's not you know it's not a little kitty it's not captain underpants it's yeah. 
it is something that anyone could enjoy that you could you can read like i could buy this i could read it and then i could give it to my nephew and say dude read this you're gonna like it yeah and i think once people get a, get over the fact that yeah it's a it's a talking pillow man uh, i think that they will actually see you know what it, exactly what it is as a superhero comic but yeah it, yeah there is a talking pillow but i mean you know we have yeah, we have weird. teenage mutant into turtles we have you know a man with the power of a spider the yeah. guy who turned into a big green thing yeah <laughs> so it's not really that far fetched it's comic books exactly exactly it's a <laughs> escapism you know, I always, like I said, I, I, I can't see other than the Hulk's pants. I can't, <laughs> you know, it drives me nuts when people start trying to push uh, realism and try to like nitpick on the, re, you know, the, re, the, oh, this is not realistic. None of it's realistic. It's a comic book. It's, it's like my son will ask me something about SpongeBob when we're watching it. I'm like, it's a cartoon. <laughs> why, are you, why are you? Yes, we know they're underwater. Yes, fire is not supposed to be underwater. You know, but it's that cartoon. There's only logic when they mention it. Yeah, when they mean they need to have the logic. But yeah, it's a comic. Just have fun with it. Yeah, well, that's just it. Like it's it's all just fun escapism. Like you said, you've got Ninja Turtles, you've got all sorts of stuff out there. You know, there's no reason that you I mean, can't we have. have a, we have a cyber frog. I mean, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, I mean, we're well, making talking pillow so different. Exactly. Well, that's just it. You know, it's it's anything. It's suspension of disbelief, and and it's just having fun. You I'm know, realism, I'll just look out the window. <laughs> I mean, that's basically it. You know, that's what I mean. For me, like I always, you know, I, I'm funny because when it comes to like movies and things like that, like when I when I get into a movie, when I when I sit down to watch a movie or if I sit down to read a comic or read a book or whatever it might be, watch a TV show. I feel like and I'm sure most people have the same feeling like I, I feel like I am sitting down and I am explicitly putting my trust in you, the storyteller to take me for a ride. Let's have some, you know, let's have some fun. I'm going to go with you. Like whatever you want to show me, I I'm cool with it. Like it's okay. If you make it work and it's fun and it's entertaining, I'll be, I'll be all right with that. I mean, if you've ever seen like wanted with Angelina Jolie, where they curve the bullets, Oh yeah. Like, you know, like that's ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous, but I don't care. Cause it worked. Cause the movie was fun and whatever, like I'm going to be there for your, you know, for whatever it is. Like, that's the thing. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to, I'm, I'm, ready to give over to you my belief and I'm going to ride this along with you and have fun and enjoy it. Now, just don't, you know, don't make the mistake that so many people seem to be making now in at least in mainstream comics of just being boring or throwing politics in or, or things that just don't belong. Yeah. I can't remember. I watched a YouTube video where it was like, they took daredevil, like his origin, and they put it up against, I think it was Miss Marvel's origin. And they showed the difference by how, you know, Daredevil became Daredevil and how she became Miss Marvel. And it was like a stark difference. It was like talky, 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 no action. She just got her powers just because. And, you know, it showed him what he did, what his dad didn't want him to do and right. stuff like that. And it was like, what happened to that? How did we get to this? And then if you say anything about it, then you're the bad guy. You're, you know this and that and all oh, the yeah. other and it's like are we not allowed to say hey this is wrong this is this is you know what is going on here well I, labeled bad guys again i think it, it's all related i think it comes back to what we were talking about earlier about people not wanting to promote their own work like there are people who are in comics right now who don't who who actively seem to dislike comics <laughs> like like not only do they not seem to be like the, not only do they not seem to love comics they seem to actively dislike comics which I is think they're, i think they're there just to get to the next level like tvs movies and stuff like that and you can yeah. tell you can tell absolutely i agree I, I there's people who are literally just waiting to get they're in comics just so they can get out of comics yeah, and then if you ask them how they did it, then they just are snarky. And I think it was – I forgot who it was that, that everybody – you know, I think it was Tom King or something like that where, where they asked him how – you know, and he was just like writing, just writing a lot. And it was like, okay, can you expand on what you did? You know? Right. And it was just like, dude, you know, it's your customers. They're just wanting to know. I mean – 
Yeah, if someone, if someone's genuinely interested and they like your, if they're asking you that, it's because they must like your work. Exactly. If, you're not going to ask someone whose work you can't stand how to how to become more like them. <laughs> you know, if you don't like them, you're not going to ask them for advice on how to get into into the whatever it might be, whatever the field is. So obviously, this is someone who who likes your work and would like to know some just even just a little bit of advice on how to get there. Exactly. And, to, and to just brush it off of like, well, well, people do that. A lot of artists do that all the time, too, which is, oh, just draw. It's like, yeah, we know that, but you know, is there anything else? We we got the part we're drawing. I mean, yeah, yeah. If you would have told me sleep, I would have been like, what? But you know, yeah, we know to draw. But but yeah, and and you know, one thing I like about the comic skate thing is that you know, well, I don't, you know, there's crazy stuff going on, but you know, the heart of it is, you know, be good, be kind to your customers. You know, treat them like, you know. Th that's your, you know, they're, they're taking a chance on you. So, I mean, you know, they're the ones that are, are, are buying your product. They are the ones that, you know, this is happening for. So, I mean, I think we, I think the pros have gotten away from that too, is that, you know, they could care less if we buy them or not, they're still getting a, a paycheck. Right. Well, they, I mean, they basically, at one point, I, I don't remember who it was, but somebody came out and said, I mean, in not so many words, they basically came out and said that when they said that the readers aren't the customers. Yeah. Like, they, they literally said the readers aren't the customers. It's the comic book stores that buy the – not realizing, you know, the there are no comic book stores to buy comics if the readers don't also buy from the comic book store. Like, and, yeah, and I think in the last two years or year, I mean, a lot of comic stores have been closing up shop. Oh yeah, uh, no, it's it's been absurd. I mean, it's been I think in the last two years, it's something on the di uh, something like over a hundred at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's you know there, there's there's not that many to begin with. And I guess in the big cities like New York and California, it doesn't really affect you that much. It's the smaller states and smaller cities that yeah, if you lose one, guess what? That's the only one you have. You, right. you may have to drive another two hours to get to another one. What oh yeah. Do, what do you do then? I mean, you just buy them online and, and stuff like that. But I mean, right. but people still like to walk into the comic shops. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it's the whole thing is, you know, if you get people into the shop, then they're going to buy, probably buy more than they went in there for. Yeah. So, like you gotta, for. so you have to get them in. You know, if I'm buying, if I'm buying something online, if I, if I decide like, Oh, you know, I really would like the new issue of, you know, whatever, Mr. Awesome number one. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna go wherever I'm gonna go. If I'm if I'm gonna buy it digitally, I maybe I'll go to Comixology or something. Or if I'm just if I want the physical one, I'll go online on Amazon or whatever it might be. And I'll or I'm gonna order that one thing and then I'm gonna be done. But if I walk into a store while I'm trying to find that issue. I might see something else that looks cool and be like, Oh, what is this? I never, I never saw this before. This is, this looks pretty cool. You know? And then next thing you know, I'm buying three, four, five, six different, different books. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that was, uh, I had, uh, Peter Samedi on and he was, he, he put a, a great idea forward, at least as far as I was concerned about the stores and saying they should really be organized by genre. So that when you when you walk into a comic book store, it's it's okay. Here's the superheroes. Here's the horror books. Here's you know the mystery, but here, whatever it might be, so that people who've never set foot in a comic book store before are overwhelmed, right? So they right. have some idea of where to go. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's just like you know the old video stores and stuff like that. But yeah, that, yeah. Makes, a, that makes a lot of sense. No, I, I think it does because you know if you don't, especially if it's your first time in a comic book store. Oh, there's a lot to look at. Yeah, you have no idea where to go or what to look at. <laughs> yeah, so like you got the three walls of graphic novels, the issues from three weeks ago, a month ago, back. I mean, yeah, it, it can be overwhelming. The whole corner of figures. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Funko Pops, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, like, you know, if you walk into, um, like, for example, like I said, I, I live in New York, and I've been to, to Midtown Comics. They have a couple of different locations in the city, and... Um, I've been to both of them and the one in particular is just absolutely huge and they've got two floors and just so, I mean, there's so many things if, like when you walk in, there's just 
an entire wall of all the new stuff and then just rows and rows of back issues, graphic novels, all kinds of stuff. There's, I could absolutely see somebody who's never been in a comic book store before walking in there and just being like, ah, and then walk right, <laughs> right back out. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is a little over my head. You know, like I, I absolutely, and, and people go in there because it's in the middle of Manhattan. So you get like all kinds of foot traffic in there. You get, you know, tourists and all kinds of people just go in um, just because, and you know, most of them, what are they going to buy? They're not going to buy a comic. They're going to buy like a toy, a t-shirt, you know, a Funko pop, whatever it might be. Like, that's what they're going to end up buying. Yeah. I, I think merchandising has really taken over as well. I mean, it, it's not about the comics anymore. It just doesn't seem like it. It's just everything else. The uh, ancillary sales. Yeah, it definitely. I mean, between the, the, the movies and the merchandise, like that's where everything, which is crazy to me. Cause to me, I feel like with the movies, the comic books could be merchandise. Exactly. I always wondered why they don't have like a comic, like anytime they have a comic book movie, why don't they have comics in the lobby or something like that? So, I mean, you could sell a ton of comics right after you've seen the latest Spider-Man movie, you just have Absolutely. Spider-Man comic fair. And it's like, yeah, cause you're hyped up. You're wanting more Spider-Man when you get out. And it's like, well, dang, that would be a perfect place to, to buy a Spider-Man or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. How many kids coming out of Avengers would have just picked up any kind of Avengers book? Yeah, you would have sold out. I mean, I, I, I think there's, you know, a lot of missed opportunities there. Like, even, even if it was, you know, you could literally, I mean, the kids would have bought anything at that point. Like, they would have, they would have come out of that movie, at, like, whether it was Endgame or even before that, like, they would come out, they'd buy an, if it was, if it was an Iron Man book, they'd buy that Captain America, whatever it might be, or just a straight, you know, Avengers team book. People would have been, they would have been like, mom, dad, I want this. Exactly. <laughs> I've always said that. I was like, man, I don't, why, I don't know why they don't do that, but it's above my pay grade. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, it's funny, though, because I feel like the all the good ideas are coming from outside of the people who are actually in charge of making these decisions. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why indie comics are making a huge comeback right now. I mean, absolutely. It, it, it's, it's crazy. It reminds me of like the 90s when the image came around. I mean, it's just this time everybody has has the resources to do it themselves and doesn't need a, you know, a house to put them, you know, to put their comics out there. Right. So, I mean, it, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it'll be fun to see, you know, in the next two, three years, what's going on. Well, that's why I feel like, uh, you know, that, you know, I've done videos about it and I've talked about it and, and I always, I, I keep saying it, all the energy in the comic book industry right now is on the indie side. All of it. Like that's where all the excitement, all the energy, it's all coming from, crowdfunded campaigns, self-published books, indie books from from publishers like Alterna. Like that's where all the excitement is coming. Exactly. I mean, I I don't know if you saw it. Ethan's uh uh tweet earlier where it showed I forgot how much money has been made through um Comicscape. The the you know the the books that were put out under the Comicscape um right moniker and it was just staggering how much it was i mean it was just like in the millions and it's oh. like look at this and look how much you're missing on the you know the big two or whatever that's money that y'all could have had if you got your crap together oh yeah because these are all people who wanted to buy comics these yeah. are people, these are people who literally wanted to spend money and were basically told no we don't want your money exactly exactly and you see where they're going i mean look at it i mean it's just like a year ago, you didn't have as many. And now it's just like, it's just, heck, it got me wanting to put out a comic. And here we are a year later, you know. Yeah, but absolutely. Everybody's excited. Everybody wants it. They want to give their money away. But the other, the big two are just like, no, we don't want it. We, we don't need it. Not, that's like the opposite of what you're supposed to do. <laughs> exactly. That's when you're exactly. selling something, you're supposed to want the money. There you and go. And like, not like in a bad way, just like, you know, you, you want <laughs> I want you to buy this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's how simple it really should be. <laughs> there you go. Maybe I should get him to call DC and Marvel and say, hey, look, this is what needs to happen. <laughs> He's 11. Let him run the company. <laughs> 
No, it, it, but that's the thing. Like, I, and I've said it, and and I feel like there are, you know, with all the YouTube channels that have popped up and all of the, all these live streams that are always going on and stuff, people are excited about comics. But it's really funny because they're excited about comics and they're not excited about anything that you you know when when you say comic books to just a normal person on the street, they're thinking Batman, Superman, Spider Man. That's not what has people excited. What yeah. has what has people excited now is all of this new stuff because, and I really do, I really do believe a big part of it is because the people who are creating these books genuinely love what they're doing. Oh yeah. I mean, it, I mean, when I was a kid, yeah, I mean, I would love to draw in comics, but you know, like we talked about earlier, life gets in the way and you know, I would have never thought, when I was a kid, you know, growing up, I was like, I never would have thought I would have had a comic coming out or trying to get a comic out. Right. But that's where we're at now is that like the people who it, it's funny because the, the, the lethargy and the just seeming not just seeming of just not caring from the big publishers has made people like you, people like, uh, you know, people who were established pros, people who weren't established pros, um, it's made people like me just want to either make books or promote the books that people are making. When you see someone who's genuinely putting their heart and soul into a project. Yeah. I mean, it would, it, it would be awesome to get this out there and, you know, be amongst all the other ones. Well, I think I do, like I said, I do think, you know, for anybody who, who just joined us or whatever, um, you know, you're going to relaunch. You, you still got the campaign going on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to relaunch on Indiegogo uh, with a restructured campaign. Yeah. Um, we started the restructure back in Kickstarter. I mean, like I said, I took it down from 3000. I don't, I got a little overzealous, I guess, whenever I was making the campaign. And so, you know, I should have took it down to 1500 and, and that's what I did on um, the Kickstarter. And I think that's a little bit easier to, to get, you know, as to the 300, 3000. Right. And then if that gets funded, then, you know, either, or we're going to come back to Indiegogo and have a leaner campaign. And like I said, I would love to get, you know, somebody to do like a variant cover for me and try to get some excitement with that and see what we can do then. I definitely think, I mean, the, I, like I said, the art looks great. The story sounds great. Like I, I definitely think you've got a winning concept and I think maybe, like you said, there was a little confusion in the beginning about, oh, this is like a kid's, you know, a little kid book um, just from the name. I guess maybe that got people. But I think now that you're, you know, you've you're making the rounds, you're doing the right thing, you're promoting, you're doing, you know, what you need to do. And I think when you come back, I, I know like Indiegogo, if you come back with a lower goal, once you pass the goal and you start to run past it, they promote you more on the site as well. Yeah. So that'll help as well. Like that's why, like you always see when you go on Indiegogo and you you click on you know comics or whatever you try to do there, you'll see like Cyber Frog, Earthworm Jim, like Graveyard Shift. Like oh, you see all those things right there at the top because they've just blown away their goals. Oh yeah, and you know if I would have came out with this three years ago, yeah, we would have been talking about you know kind of like Captain Underpants and stuff. But you know, like I said, as he grows. The characters grow and so they got a little bit more complex and it's not you know like it was like a little little kid's idea back in back you know nine years ago when we started it so not that i know more like batman and stuff like yeah. less kitty and more some of the stuff that he comes up with is nothing that i can actually put in this book because <laughs> he he likes to get violent with his, <laughs> his ideas i mean he runs around and, um, you know, acts out his scenes and stuff like that. And talking about blood and stuff. And I'm like, dear <laughs> Lord, what are you now, talking about? My story, someone either gets like a limb chopped off or has like a robot hand or something yeah, like that. It, it, he, get, he gets dark sometimes. And it kind of worries me because I'm like, what is he going to do to me? <laughs> Man, first the hammer, now this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for the next story, we'll go all adults in or something like that and see what happens. Because in my Star Wars thing, he has like a robot thing and I a whole war scene where he's his arm blown off yeah <laughs> listen i can completely understand where he's coming from because when i was a kid and i used to make uh my own comics and i used to do 
Uh, I used to I used to draw it. I used to do this thing. I used to call them I called them movies. They weren't movies. I would just take paper and I would just draw like page a uh, different thing on each page. It was essentially just like a splash page, I guess you would call it. Mm -hmm. And each one would be a different one. And I did ones for like G.I. Joe and Transformers. And of course, being like a little boy, my whole thing, I used to get so annoyed when I would watch G.I. Joe that every time a plane would blow up, you'd see the parachute. Yeah. No, no one ever got hit. Nobody ever got shot. <laughs> and it's like just this army force is shooting lasers. And it's like, wait a minute. What? We don't, they, don't, they don't have bullets in, in G.I. Joe? It's all lasers? So, oh, yeah. So I used to make those, and those used to get kind of bloody sometimes. No, so I, I feel bad at aiming because I don't want to show that much blood. Yeah, I guess that would be. But the Mandalorian, it looks like it would be more gory because someone gets shoved into like a door. Oh wow! And you don't see the blood or anything. You just hear like a squish noise. Oh. Oh, I didn't take a breath of that. <laughs> Jeez, you know that we're on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I remember uh, even uh, seeing uh, the cartoon Exo Squad and somebody in the show, uh, one of the characters died. And I remember being like, whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 we'll be watching uh, something and it's like, oh, my God, they showed blood on it. It's a cartoon and it's like on Cartoon Network. And it's like, wow, that is crazy. What are they doing? I forgot what it was one time when it had blood and it kind of just, you know, made a step back a little bit. I was like, this is Cartoon Network. <laughs> oh, is it Teen Titans Go? Maybe. I think he got hit and like spit out some teeth or something like that. I don't know. Well, that was even like the old, like the, the old Batman, the animated series. Like once in a blue moon, you might see like a little blood come from somebody's mouth or something. Yeah. That I, re yeah, I remember that. And it was like, whoa. Yeah. This has got something here. They used to they used to tell some funny stories about that show though, where the the censors would drive them insane because there would be a scene they would animate a scene like like a Bruce Wayne party scene, let's say, and you know it's one of these big charity functions, so everyone's like people are holding glasses in their hands, you know, um, and they literally I remember there was one I think it was on the special features on the DVDs or something they were talking about it and they said how. Fox made them change the glass because it looked too much like a wine glass. So oh, they wow. had, so they had to change it to look like more just like a regular, like a tumbler or whatever. Like it was like just real random stuff where like they had to change certain things because they just they had to tweak it just a little bit. Well, if you do go back and look at it, it was pretty edgy, you know, for that for that time. I mean, you know, I know it was the '90s, but and well, late '80s, early '90s, and some of the stuff, you know like that the fighting and you know sometimes the 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 dresses and the scanty clad women and stuff it was they were pushing envelope with it I oh mean, yeah it, it, yeah that's i mean that's what's one of the greatest i think one of the greatest superhero cartoons out there ever oh without a doubt without i don't think you could even get close maybe batman uh beyond and what some of the, talking about? The, the batman animated series oh yeah yeah I actually, it's it. You mentioned Batman Beyond. I always really liked Batman Beyond. <laughs> yeah, and aren't they, aren't they talking about maybe bringing that back? They are. They that are. I don't know if it's gonna happen or not, but they're definitely talking about it. Man, that would be awesome. I like Karen McGinnis. Yeah, as cool as Batman. Mm -hmm. I, like I, I, I was gonna say I've been saying, and I, I'm not. Listen, I'm by no means am I the only person who said this. I've seen it online and stuff too. But like, I would love to see them make a Batman Beyond movie and have Michael Keaton play old Bruce Wayne. Oh, that would be, that would be yeah. great. I, th I think they should. That I don't know. Be... I don't know who you'd get to play Terry, but it would just be so cool to have. I don't know. DC, DC and their Warner brothers and DC and their movie universe. I don't know what's going on with that. It's just like, what's, what's Canon and what's not Canon anymore. Yeah. Well, That's... it's all, yeah, it's all a mess. They don't, they can't seem to figure their, figure it out themselves. <laughs> no, they can't. And the Joker movie, I don't, I, I don't even know about that. I'm some just, like some different universe, like DC Dark or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Black Label or something. Yeah, but, like why? It's weird. Like why even do that? Like what's the point? Yeah, I mean, other than the name, I don't really see what else it has to do with the Joker. Right. Well, what's funny is of all the um, 
of all the 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 DC movies, the one that got me and and actually it's funny because it got myself, my whole we we all went to go see it as a family was Shazam. Yeah, that movie. That was a really good movie. Yeah, I really year, enjoyed really. that. Yeah, we did get to see it early. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, we absolutely loved it. Like we all went, whole family went. We went and we enjoyed every minute of it. It was a great movie. Um, it had a, it just had a great feel to it. It felt like it was being made. It felt like it wasn't just made to be a product. It felt like it was made with some actual care. Exactly. Exactly. It was like a real comic book movie. Yeah. It, did, it went back. It felt like it was like they wanted to do the source material, you know, right. And, you know, it seemed like you said, it seemed like they cared. I mean, the actors seemed like they really enjoyed being there. And I don't know, you could just tell on screen. Yeah. Oh, definitely. No, it, it really was like, I, I really, I hope they get to make a sequel because I really did enjoy it. Oh, I think they will. I think, you know, they made some pretty good money on it, but I think, you know, I think it's one of their, their best rated movies besides like Wonder Woman and, Right, Wonder Woman's probably their top movie, and then Shazam, and then Aquaman. But yeah, the rest of them, I just, I, I don't know. I mean, I know they're coming out with the Flash movie, and don't know how that's going to do. But you know, Batman, yeah. we'll see what happens there. Man of Steel, I don't know who's going to be Superman. All of that, I just, you know, I wish they, I don't know, I wish they could just get their act together because I mean, it's, you know, they could just print their own money with those characters. Yeah, if they do them right, absolutely. <laughs> Well, it's funny because even like Shazam, Shazam's not a character that has this giant worldwide appeal and and renown. You know what I mean? It's not as known as Batman or Superman. Um, well, it's just like Iron Man. I mean, before 2008, yeah. Iron Man was just, you know, a secondary character. And oh, yeah. You get Robert Downey Jr. I mean, I think he made like 500000 on that movie. The first movie he made yeah. $500,000. And then now look at him. I mean, his fortune is Marvel playing playing iron man and iron man like took off i mean before it was just like yeah well you know oh, he yeah. was like, pulling the comics but you know wasn't anything like it is now now he's like everywhere oh yeah no forget it like i mean the movies just absolutely changed the, they changed the comics because suddenly the avengers were like the, like let's be honest back when that movie came out those were c and d tier characters exactly you know they were not the a team you know, it was know. it was all about the X Men. It was all about you know the X Men and Spider Man. Like you know, and, and then suddenly they didn't have the movie rights to those characters, so they had to do something. <laughs> yeah, and then this last X Men movie is like, yeah, we don't want to talk about that anymore. Oh yeah. So yeah, I, and and I will say like it's funny because I mean part of. You know, my my daughter is not big into superheroes, um, but she really wanted to see Shazam. Uh, number one, because she thought like not well, number one, because she really likes Zachary Levi, um, mm -hmm. because we're big fans of Chuck in my house. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Same thing here. <laughs> um, I think I've rewatched that series at least three times. Yeah, that was one of my wife's favorite. I mean, uh, she would watch that show religiously the comics we had the comics of chuck we had all the dvds yeah absolutely like we i've I, like i said i've rewatched it at least three maybe four times i don't even know but like i love that show and so you know and i've obviously shared that with her so yeah uh so she loves it too so then she wanted to see shazam just partially just for zachary levi but then also just because it looked like a fun movie you know it looked like a good movie so there was more, you know, it wasn't just the the guy in it. It was also the the fact that it actually looked like enjoyable. It looked like something she would want to see. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it would be it would be nice if if you know they will have more. I know that they're working on um, what is it, the Black Adam movie, and I think yeah. I just read that they were wanting to add Hawkman in there. But oh. it'd be nice to see you know the Rock versus <laughs> versus Shazam and see just how that dynamic would be. That would be cool. I would, I would definitely love to see that. Just because, I mean, first, first and foremost, I'm an old wrestling head, so <laughs> you know, I love The Rock, of course. I mean, listen, who doesn't love The Rock? Yeah. <laughs> he is everywhere. Yes. <laughs> I, if you would have asked me back when he was wrestling, I would have never thought that he would be one of the highest paid actors out there today. I mean, it's yeah. just wild seeing him, and it's like, wait a minute. 
I remember him back in the day, you know, just can you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was I was at Madison Square Garden for his first match at that Survivor Series. Oh wow. When he came out in that ridiculous outfit with the hair flopping everywhere. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> and then now look at him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like the, I mean, it's incredible. Like where he where he started and what he ended up with. <laughs> like, but that would be. I, I think that honestly, like the two of them, I could see. Like, cause Zach is a, is a, seems like a really cool guy, um, um, and he just has fun with whatever he does. Like, you know, when you hear him, still he still wants to get a Chuck movie made. That that would be great. I think yeah. I think all of them would be up for that. I, mean, I think so too. Yeah. Well, it's one of the. It's funny because it's one of the few shows out there where I've seen years and years later the cast still get together and make appearances together, and they still all seem to have fun whenever they're together. You know, it just seems like they really like absolutely have a love for that show, and I know he does because if you hear him talk about it, he clearly <laughs> wants to do something with it. Yeah, yeah. We saw him. Uh, he he spoke at uh, last year's uh, New York Comic Con, and um we saw him, he did a panel to close out the show. And even there he was talking about it. And he's like, I know, I know Chuck movie. I'm working on it. <laughs> that, would, that would be awesome. Yeah. Oh no, I would love that. Cause like I said, that, that was a show again, that's a show that actually a lot, I feel like a lot of place, a lot of, a lot of writers, a lot of even comic books could learn from that. That show had everything. It had comedy action, uh, drama. It had everything in it. Yeah. You know, and it had heart. It actually, you know, again, you know, I, I feel like, listen, you could talk about the ending. <laughs> you know, I know the ending I go back and forth on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think everybody does. But like that show had just a little everything and it was just something special. You know, certain I feel like certain shows, certain movies just have that thing where everything clicks. And, and I, for me, at least, I think that was one of them. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the uh, CW can go watch the the seasons and learn how to do their shows like that. Yeah, right. Sam, I feel like he plays a good kid in an adult body. He did. He did. He, he, was, did. Very, yeah. he was very believable as you know, as a child trapped in a man's body. Yeah, he definitely did that right. I mean, he because he has that energy, like he really does. Yeah, and he was wasted in what was it Thor when he was one of those guys. Yeah. Like, eh. You know, let's give him a real part. Yeah, like, well, because he really, I mean, like, what did he have, like, two lines in that whole movie? Yeah, and I think it was, was he in the first one and the last one? And then the second one, they recast him or something like that. Or was yeah. he in the first two? And then I can't remember what it was, but. He was in Thor. Yeah, he was in Thor. He was yeah, he was, yeah. I, I think it was the second one he was in. Was, was he not in the first one? I don't think so. Okay. I think it was the second one he was in. But even so, like speaking of Thor, now look at where like the movies are going, like the Marvel movies are going. They're taking the exact same route that the comics did that sent Marvel right down into the toilet. Yep. <laughs> they are. Cause I think they just announced like, what is it? The A, not the A team, but the A, where it's oh, the all the, ladies. Yeah, uh, the female Avengers, Avengers. With Captain Marvel. And then they're talking like, hey, Miss Marvel could actually take the place of Spider Man and stuff like that. And oh, it's like, God. yeah. Wait a minute. What? Nobody, nobody. I mean, you guys not learn anything. Look at look at the actual Marvel comics. Look at their sales and look at how they're not doing well. Do you want your movies to be like that? Right. Like these characters, like especially like I don't understand. I mean, I do understand, but I don't understand the obsession that Marvel has with Captain Marvel. Yeah. They for years now, it's been years that they have been trying to push this character and make her something, make her popular. Like no one cares. No. And they never really, I mean, like let's, I mean my whole history, it's, it's hysterical. Like I was talking to my wife about this, like my whole history of captain Marvel in my time reading comics was, Oh yeah. She's the one that rogue took the powers from. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like like that was it she was a, an afterthought like it and that was it there was nothing to it that's kind of how she was in endgame she was an afterthought and and like them just trying to constantly push her to the front 
people people will buy and people will follow what they like. It's clear that this character has not connected with the audience. Move on. Yeah. And like, yeah, even in the comics. I mean, there that's one of the the comics that they have to restart every three months with a new number one just to sell. Right. Because nobody I mean, you'll have the the you know the people that will die on the hill for uh, Captain Marvel, uh, but you know, no. She's, but even, she's but even not, those even those people are they buying the comics? No, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> they 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 want to defend it, defend her. They want to defend Brie. What's her name? Brie Larson. Uh -huh. That's who they're defending. It's not the character because obviously they're not out there buying the comics. Right. And even prior to the movie, even prior to the whole Brie Larson thing, which, you know, she's a whole nother topic, yeah. but the comic, the character itself, I mean, they've been trying for years to, to launch and relaunch a Captain Marvel book and it flops every time and they just keep doing it. I guess they like, you know, losing money. I don't know. That's just, I, I just, I, it, Part of me feels like it's, is it just because of the name because they're Marvel comics and she's Captain Marvel. They feel like they need to do this. <laughs> like, I, you know, we know the real Captain Marvel. Is Shazam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 like, I just wonder, like, is that what it is? Like, I just, I can't for the life of me, I cannot figure it out. I don't know. That's you know? It's, it's insane. And, and with, as far as like Ms. Marvel goes, um, I feel like Ms. Marvel could have been something like the concept of, Hey, let's make a book that will maybe aim more towards a teenage girl audience. Um, it'll be a little different. It's going to be a little more silly, a little more, you know, Disney channel comedy style, whatever. Um, but it's really, you know, it's not aimed at the, the traditional superhero market. We're trying to expand the market and there's nothing wrong with expanding the market. You know, and I feel like they could have done something with that. And then it just, but it turned into just a, a freaking nightmare, like with what they did with that. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I don't even know what to say about it. <laughs> like, I, like, I feel like the, the idea of doing a book that was aimed at like teenage girls wasn't, a, it's a decent enough experiment to try it. But I feel like they, everyone over there has this feeling of, well, if we're going to go after the female market, we must completely eliminate the male market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's their whole goal is to get rid of all the males. It seems like. But like, it's the most absurd strategy. It would be like McDonald's saying, you know. No more hamburgers. Yeah, we, we no longer want to serve meat. <laughs> <laughs> vegan everything. Everything's vegan now. And if you wanted meat, well, you're just a monster. Like, yeah. That's exactly what it is. And if we, you know, if we say anything bad about it, it's like, you're this and you're that. And it's just like, all right, whatever. <laughs> all right, I'm going to eat my hamburger in silence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's true, though. I, I just, it's bizarre. Like, they act like one cannot exist alongside the other. And that's the problem. I mean, they want to push us away and, and you know that's why we have what we have now. I mean, why we're everybody's doing their own thing because they don't want us anymore. Yeah, well, that's exactly what it is, and that's why. And it's crazy because they did it not just to the fans, but they did it to professionals with years of history, and and you know guys like Ethan and and yeah. John Malin and and if, if, you, if you didn't have their same beliefs, their same ideologies, then you're the bad guy. We're going to blacklist you and this and that. And then, you know, if you try to get, you know, on with somebody else, we're going to bully them to not letting you, you know, letting them run your product and all that stuff. And it's just insanity. It is. It's absolutely. It's like, what happened just to selling comic books? Isn't that the main thing is to sell comic books? I mean, Back in the day, I mean, I didn't know what your policy, what your your you know political views were, and all that good stuff. I didn't care. I just like your stories and your art. Why can't we get back to that? Yeah, exactly. I would look at a book and be like, this guy, like you know, I would look at at, at you know, let's say an X Men book, and I'd be like, oh, it's drawn by Jim Lee. Yeah, I'm gonna buy that. 
<laughs> I don't care, you know, what he does outside of drawing and writing and all that good stuff. I just want the book. And it's and it's ridiculous. Now, if you're not this and you're that, then you know, we don't want anything from you. You're the bad guy. We're gonna, you know, burn you to the ground. Right. And it's just like, you know, when you send your kids to school, it's like, you know, as a teacher, you shouldn't know what their political stance is and all that good stuff. You're just there to teach them, you know, a lesson. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't care about your ideologies or anything like that. I just care that my kid gets a good, a good education, but even there you can't even, you know, you can't even do that anymore. It's, it's honestly, it's, it's really ridiculous because we're at the point where, well, for, well, first and foremost, like, let me, let me ask you, cause I know for me, this has been my whole life. I was always told, you know, in polite company, you don't talk about religion. You don't talk about politics. Exactly. And that's and, how I was called as well. Yeah, and, and like I don't know when it changed to now you only talk about politics. <laughs> well, I can tell you when it changed. It changed in 2016 when people didn't get their yeah. way and then they just completely lost their freaking minds. And it's like, oh my God, the person you wanted to win didn't win. So now you're just going to go crazy. And I mean, a lot of people that you might have admired before, it's like, have you just lost your mind? I mean, you know. What happened? You lost. Guess what? There's four more years. Somebody else can come in. I mean, it's like, it's not like it's forever. Right. But people didn't, you know, I don't know what it is. It's like they got a thing in their head that just snapped and they went crazy. And well, now we're in that culture that, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a conservative and I tell you, you know, somebody else that I'm a conservative, they don't like it. Then I'm this, that, and everything else. And I'm like, well, dang, I'm just going to stop talking about it. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, in a way, it's funny because, I, you know, I get very conflicted sometimes because, like I said, I was always taught you don't talk about that stuff. Like, that's, you don't. Like, if you have, if you hear someone saying something and you're in a, a certain situation, like if you're at work or something like that, um, and you hear someone expressing an opinion about a political matter or whatever, and it's something you don't agree with, you're at work. You just keep your mouth shut and ignore it and move on. Yeah, you're you're there. You're paid to do a job. That's it. I mean, you know, whatever. And and it's funny because I, I there are times where I feel like because for me, my policy has always been that I don't tell like especially when it comes to to elections and things of that nature. My policy has always been and continues to be at least for the time being, unless I decide to change at some point. I never tell anyone who I voted for. That that yeah, I, and I have no problem with that. I, I, I don't care. It's the people that go insane if they didn't get something, you know, done their way. It's like their way or the highway. And it's just like everybody else is wrong if you have a different opinion. And it's like, whoa. Well, yeah. it's funny. It, it's crazy because, like I said, like I never I never tell anyone who I vote for. It's just not something I've ever done. Um, I feel like that is something there's a reason why voting is private. And that's one of the great things about being in this country is that you are allowed to cast your vote and not be have any kind of backlash for that you know there are other countries where if you vote the wrong way you disappear yeah, yeah. well <laughs> then in 2016 i mean it, it was getting that bad it was like whoa are you kidding me well that's what i'm saying like i it just it's crazy to me because then i start to feel like you know if there's other people you know and, and there are, clearly there are a lot of other people who are like me who who don't want to i don't want to constantly go out and proselytize my political beliefs that's not you know and again that's not what i'm here on on the that's not what i'm on the internet for i'm on the internet to talk about comic books like that's that's my whole thing that's it. that's the way it should be i mean that's what that's what ultimately we're doing is trying to sell comics and promote comics but it's everything else it's just like everybody just goes crazy about it and it's you know you even if it's somebody that you don't agree with they don't want to listen to you because you are different than what they are and right. it's like this is not the way it should be at all right and what like i mean there were years and years where people who had all sorts of different political opinions were able to be friends exactly <laughs> except for two or three years ago or two and a half years ago now it's like people you know if i wear a red hat if it's just a red hat, uh -huh. am I going to get my my head bashed in or something like that just because of a red hat and somebody takes it the wrong way or something like that? It's just right. like, no. When, it's, when did we get to this? When did we become a decivilized 
you know, society. What what happened? Well, that's what it's it's just absolutely nuts. And the fact that I find it really like in a way I find it sad and at the same time I find it kind of funny that the comic book industry has become so overrun with with political zealots because it's comic books. Like <laughs> Exactly. It's like I forgot what it was today. I read something on Twitter and it was talking about it's not your birthright. And uh, there was this one guy is like you know it's comic books and i was just like thank god it's <laughs> comic books freaking pieces of paper with drawings on them i mean what are we talking about here it's just like movie you know like actors and stuff it's like you're making a movie it's a movie Why, right we don't we don't need all this other crap i mean all you're doing is just hurting yourself and hurting the people that actually followed you before that you just you know, made them not want to follow you anymore. Right. That's and the thing. Like there's never, there's, I feel like there's never a positive outcome uh, when you decide that you're going to be this big political mouthpiece. My son's going to go downstairs, but um, he just wanted to say thank you for um, having him on, on the show. So say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Parker. It was great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> he was getting antsy. Okay, <laughs> he's, he's fun and he's 11. So, you know, he's all, he's trying to figure out what's going on. I get it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's just, it's, no, Sorry. go ahead. I was just gonna say, why just, why can't we just get back to, you know, selling comics and, and promoting comics and, you know, why should we have to get into all the other stuff? Right. Well, it, it's really funny because clearly I mean, it's it's obviously that Zach touched a huge nerve when he started his channel. Oh, yeah. Um, because he was pointing out all this nonsense. And the funny thing is, is when you watch, like, I remember, I remember watching at the time I was working overnights when he first started doing his videos. And so I had a lot of time at work to just watch video after video. And he... At, at the beginning, all he was really doing was just kind of like pointing out the absurdity of the stuff that was being in the comics. He was just reviewing comics and being like, what is this? Like, this is ridiculous. This is just a bad comic. This is terrible writing. This is the, like it wasn't anything politically motivated. It wasn't anything personal because at the time, you know, he was <laughs> some dude on a phone reviewing comic books <laughs> and the entire comic book industry exploded and went after this man like he was god knows what yeah he was like the plague i mean they melted down i mean i've never even seen anything like it you know ever i mean i was like this is just a guy like you just said it's just a guy on his phone and you guys are trying to you know tear him apart tell it tear his personal life apart i mean it was it was insane it, it's just it's absolutely crazy that like just criticizing a comic could get that sort of response <laughs> and then they found out that that you know ethan is a republican and all of a sudden he's a nazi and stuff like that and it was like whoa whoa wait what yeah well ev everything became there was never you know there's literally no nuance to anything everything is black or white and if you are the slightest bit different from their ideology you are the worst thing in the world <laughs> yeah and, and it's sad it's very very sad because again we're here with comic books right not like you know we have the greatest thing ever that's gonna you know save society it's comic books yeah it's fun it's or at least it's supposed to be fun <laughs> it's supposed to be yeah <laughs> you know and that's the thing that's why like i try you know, with my channel, like I do a lot of comic book reviews of just indie comics. And I tend to, you know, I know, uh, listen, I don't have the biggest following. Obviously, I've got like 181 subscribers, but like I could um, just a reminder if you're watching to like and subscribe. Uh, <laughs> um, I could I could probably get more views if I just bought a lot of really crap comics and did a lot of just roasting videos but I'd rather take the books I like and do reviews of that stuff so that people, other people out there, hopefully will see those reviews and be like, Oh, that looks cool. I'm going to go pick that up. Yeah. 
you know, my whole my whole thing is I'm just trying to I'm my 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 plan really is to try and lift up other creators and lift up comic books um, because I want comics to be good. I want people to enjoy comics. I want them to be popular and and thriving. Yeah, I mean, I would love it. I I would love for it to be the way you know it was when I was growing up. I mean, I know the '90s are usually the you know the usually called the worst era in comics, but I mean, it got a lot of readers in. And a lot of them are still around today as adults, but the way it's going right now, I mean, in five years, are, are we really going to have comics anymore? Is it all going to be digital? Is I mean, what's going to happen? I mean, if we are continuing on this same, the same path, then in five years, we won't have them. No. And that's the thing. I mean, I, I, I tend to, to be, a, I tend to, to be optimistic in terms of, I do believe the mainstream comic industry is going to fail, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but comics themselves will still be around um, because there's going to be there's going to be people like, you know, Ethan and, and Zach and, you know, people like Brian Polito, who have been doing crowdfunding for years now. Oh, yeah. um, you know, there's going to be people who are putting books out. It, it, the whole industry will change and the way people buy and, and maybe even the way they read them, I don't know, it might change. Although I still feel like the people like me, you know, most people still would rather have a physical comic. Than oh, yeah. Comic. I, I, I would, you know, I'd love to have the floppies, you know. But I feel like, you know, comics themselves will still be around. But that mainstream industry of Marvel and DC and the comic shops, unfortunately, I think they're all going to end up going the way of the Dodo at some point. And it's like, how, how, how many more years can the movie industry, you know, sustain comic movies? Right. Like eventually that bubble will burst as well. Yeah. I'm surprised it hasn't yet, but I mean, we don't have any more Avengers movies. We don't have any of those big guys, you know, coming out with a movie every year. We're going to have right. the second tier, you know, third tier movies coming out. Like, you know, the A squad, whatever it's called, and uh -huh. the, and the the Thor love and whatever it is, right. it's like you're you're gonna see really a people a lot of people are not gonna be coming to that because yeah. a lot of people were sticking by you know all these movies leading up to Avengers Endgame, and now it's like what's what's next? Well, I feel like for most for a lot of people for the majority of people the main like the mainstream movie going audience who weren't already comic book fans when these movies started coming out for them Endgame was exactly that. It was the end. Yeah. That's the end of this story. They're done. They're not going to come back. I I really do feel like a lot of these people are not going to come back. You you're going to still I mean the first few movies in the next whatever the next phase We'll probably still make some decent money in terms of just movie, you know, movie money, but they're going to you're going to see a diminishing return, diminishing returns, diminishing returns until eventually they just kind of go, yeah, this this isn't worth it anymore. Yeah. And e and either they're going to go they're they're going to go one of two routes. They're either just going to say, eh, kill it. That's it. It's over. The, the the Hollywood will say the fad is over. Move on to the next thing, whatever it is. Um or they might try to make one last gasp and I could see them doing this at some point and just shelling out, just backing up a Brinks truck to Robert Downey Jr.'s house and saying, come back for one more, please. Yeah. Can you join us when we have the X-Men and Fantastic Four together finally and then have Iron Man show up? And yeah. Yeah, I, I could see them making one last gasp at that at some point. Um, but I don't know if that point, if it will even be enough at that point, you know, or will people just be done with it? Yeah. Because I think this next phase is really, it's really going to be the turnoff, the turnoff spout, because I just don't see anybody, you know, getting excited about what it was. I mean, you know, in, in Avengers, we were like, yeah, we got two more movies and it's going to be awesome. And, you know, see how much money they made. And then now Spider-Man was their next big cash cow. And, you know, we'll see what Sony does with that. But with, Disney and Marvel. I don't know. I mean, they got a lot riding on Disney Plus. I think it is. Yeah, but we'll see. What yeah, happens. well, they've got, they've got the shows that they're doing for that, but like even those, like Marvel television. Yeah, hasn't been you know spectacular. It's been pretty hit or miss, at least in my opinion. Um, the stuff that was on Netflix, 
was very different from, you know, like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC. Oh, yeah, it was a different tone. It was very different. You know, like, I, I absolutely love Daredevil. Um, yeah. It doesn't hurt that Daredevil has always been one of my favorite characters. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I really thought they nailed Daredevil on that show. I thought, I thought, I thought he was perfect. And yeah. if he comes back and it's somebody else, then it's going to be a big disservice because he was perfect. Yes. No, I agree. I, I think that show did a great job of capturing the character, the feel, everything. Um, I felt like some of their other shows, though, were eh. like, you know, I, I thought like like um, Luke Cage, I was loving in the beginning yeah. of season one, like the first half of season one. I was really into it. And I'm like, this is good. And then it just kind of went completely off the rails. Yeah, and, that's, that's when it lost me. Yeah. It just it didn't do it. And like for me, Jessica Jones was never a big draw to begin with. I watched I watched the first season. And honestly, the only reason I watched the entire first season was for David Tennant. Yeah, uh, because he was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But she's such an unlikable character that I I was not coming back for season two. Yeah, she was one of the characters on Breaking Bad that I was not, you know, sad that she was gone. (laughs) <laughs> you know but that's the thing like i feel like even there even what has been promoted as their good stuff on television really when you break it down has still been kind of hit or miss yeah you know so i i wonder the disney plus shows that they're trying to bank on like this the wandavision show and uh, but, then, but then you got moon knight but then you find out that you know moon knight is more like in the lines of daredevil He's going to be a little bit, he's going to be darker, you know, right out that, you know, no, nothing is over PG 13 on there. And it's like, ah, oh, we're going to get a watered down moon night. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's going to be. And, and some of the other stuff that they've got, like that they've announced, like the whole, the what if thing, it's an animated show and it's all, every episode is based around one of the movies. Yeah. And there's so, so much more you can do with it. Yeah. Like they're, they're limiting themselves on what they can do. And and I, part of me understands the idea because there are more people who are familiar with the movie, you know, than they are with the comic book continuity. Which the continuity in the comics is shot to hell anyway. So, yeah. but, <laughs> I can't even keep up anymore. Yeah. You know, so I mean, when you reboot a thousand times, like, what do you expect? I mean, maybe that's why they have Marvel a thousand because they rebooted everything a thousand times. <laughs> That's what it is. It's the thousandth reboot. <laughs> and they've got more. <laughs> Captain America, I mean, Captain Marvel will be rebooted 17 times in 2020. Oh, yeah. How, listen, how many of these books? I mean, it's funny because I mean, we were talking about Zach before, and he talks about it all the time how these books, they start out as ongoings, and then suddenly, oh, no, this was a miniseries. It got canceled <laughs> at issue six. Well, nobody said it was a miniseries when it started. <laughs> Oh, all of a sudden it is. That revisionist history that everybody likes to do. Oh, we meant for it to be. Right. We we told our story. This was okay. yeah, you, that means that nobody was buying it and you suck. So now we're gonna reboot it with somebody else. Yeah, no, they, they definitely I mean I, I don't know if if the Disney Plus thing is really gonna I, I have my doubts about the whole service as as to begin with, um, but only because they keep they're they're banking on so many of these new new things, and like I think they're gonna have a Loki show. Yep, and I think they're gonna have an American Chavez. Is it America Chavez or what's her name? Yeah, America Chavez. Yeah, they're gonna have her show, and then the She Hulk. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and the She-Hulk, you know, of course, the big question is which She-Hulk will it be? Exactly. And then you're going to have the Abomination. They said they want the Abomination and the leader to show up. And it's like, why does she get two of his biggest? Right. Movies? And he, I mean, and he he can't even make his own movie go. And she's going to get two of the biggest Hulk villains for herself. And it's like, well, where's he at? Yeah, it, it's too, I feel like they just they're grasping at straws with some of this stuff just to try and get people in to get subscribers in. Yeah. But it, you know, in reality, I mean, listen, I like she Hulk, but like, she so Hulk, which version is it going to be? Yeah. 
and and then even they announced like one of the, it's funny because I think the thing that most people from that first announcement of the next phase of movies were excited about was they're going to make a new blade. Yeah. And everybody was like, what? They're making blade. And then like, oh, yeah, but it's not going to be Wesley Snipes. Uh, you know, I, we don't know what it's going to be. And it was kind of like that and instantly deflated everybody. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, heck, I mean, he was blade. I mean, he. You know, he was he was before all of these other guys yes. as, as a as a Marvel superhero movie, and and they just like, well, no, we don't want him. Like, and that's to me is like, I mean, honestly, I'm sure he could still do it. Oh, I know he could. He, yeah, he, yeah he's still. I mean, he's still in shape. Everything. I mean, he, right. Yeah, I don't. I don't have. You know, I think he could do it in, in a heartbeat. And and it's funny because, like I said, that was like the one thing I heard anyone. Like when that they announced that whole slate of movies with, you know, Thor, Love and Thunder and all these other stuff. And then like Blade and every the one thing everybody was talking about was, holy crap, they're going to make a new Blade movie. And then when they said without Wesley Snipes, all the air in the room just got sucked out. And yeah. Like, and I was like, man, OK, we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, man, way to just like shoot yourself in the foot over and over. <laughs> But that seems like how Disney how Disney does it. I mean, look at Star Wars. Jeez. Oh my God, Star Wars. Yeah, that's a whole another episode, right there. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, with when it comes to Star Wars, it really breaks my heart because yeah. I love Star Wars, and what really it, I can't even tell. Like, it's funny because, and this relates to comic books and the same thing we were talking about before. How a lot of comic book fans that are comic book fans now become comic book fans because their parents were fans and they introduced them to the hobby. I, um, yep, that's exactly right. I indoctrinated both of my kids, you know, from birth. It's like Superman, Star Wars. Superman, right. And I was Star Wars. that Star Wars is the same thing. I, for, you know, my daughter, it, it was so funny. Like before, the force awakens came out it was when they were just first starting to advertise it and stuff you know my daughter came to me one day and said dad can we watch all the star wars movies <laughs> and i almost cried <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes i was like yes yes we can <laughs> so we literally like we sat down and over the course of like, I think it was, it took us maybe like two weeks because of, you know, just other stuff. We watched episode one through six and we watched them in that order because I knew, and I know people are going to argue with me about the order to watch them in, but I knew that even though my daughter had probably heard just through cu cultural osmosis, you know, Luke, I'm your father. Yes. She didn't know that Anakin would become Darth Vader. My my wife, to you know, to to piggyback on that, my wife, when we watched episode three, she was floored when she found out that <laughs> that, that uh, Anakin was was Darth Vader, and I was like, God, I wish I could be like that. <laughs> I grew up, you know, four, five, and six, and you know, yeah, of course, she'd never seen a Star Wars before, you know meeting me and and we watched it and she was like oh my god i was like yes i wish i wish i could have that but yeah that that's funny that you say that but she it, it, and that's the thing like i remember we watched all and she loved them she loved all of them she loved the prequels she loved the original trilogy i mean when 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 anakin turns to the dark side my daughter was bawling <laughs> i mean just absolutely just crying because she loved Anakin. Anakin yeah. was like, she thought he was great. Like, obviously she thinks he's hunky, but you know, <laughs> but, but she loved Anakin. In fact, we literally, <laughs> we literally at last minute celebration Orlando, when they did star Wars celebration in Orlando, mm -hmm. it was like, I think it was like Easter weekend or something like that. We last minute bought tickets we went down to Florida, went to celebration and paid for the meet and greet so she could meet Hayden Christensen. Oh, my God. Uh, we did it all like super last minute because she was so into it. 
And we were like, this would be the great, like, she's going to be so excited. This is going to be the, like the greatest thing. And it was, and she absolutely was just, I mean, she, after she met him, she was like shaking. She was so just, <laughs> you know, and she loved star Wars. And when, then we went to go see force awakens. And, and it's funny because even after that, like then she started watching clone wars um, and she was into that. And then we went to go see force awakens and I don't. I know some people hate Force Awakens. I don't hate it. I thought it was fine. Um, I think a I, lot of it is like for us is you know it's a Star Wars. It's been a while since we've seen a Star Wars. We were just really hyped. Yeah, you know, yeah. The Star Wars. Well, my the other thing I always say about Force Awakens is Force Awakens had the benefit of I believed that they knew where they were going. Yes. So when I watched Force Awakens and I see Ray doing things that other Jedi masters took years to learn. I'm thinking, well, there's a reason for this and we're going to find out what it is. <laughs> we, we mistaken. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my fault because I trusted them that they would actually plan the story in advance. I know silly idea. Um, but what's crazy to me is their whole push with the sequel trilogy and it's the same thing that Marvel has done in the comic books. Their whole push was to get girls into Star Wars, to get girls into comic books. And the, you know who did a better job of getting my daughter into Star Wars than the Disney movies was George Lucas. Yes. She and loved all those movies. He, 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 he had that special mind that he knew. It was like an uncanny sense that he knew what was going to be the next thing. And, and people try to be like that and they just, they can't do it. But for some reason he just has that knack about him and that's what's missing right now. I just think, I think it's so funny that their really ham fisted attempt to get girls into star Wars. Cause that's a lot of what they're trying to do with the sequel trilogy. We've got to put women in charge. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. Cause that'll make the girls like star Wars actually made my daughter hate star Wars now. Yep. She's done with it. I don't I don't blame her. There's a lot of people that are just like, nope, we're not gonna get sucked in again. Yeah. And and it's just so funny to me because I'm like, she's the audience. She's yep. the one you wanted. And they're not showing up. She's the one that you said you were making these movies to try and bring them into the fandom, and you ended up driving her out. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I mean it's the uh, the last Jedi was the oh. only Star Wars that I have ever only seen once, and that was in the theater. No. And I have not rewatched it. I don't want to rewatch it. It has just put that big taint, you know, just over the whole thing. I mean, my son was one of the biggest Star Wars fans, and he could care less right now. He he sees it and goes, "Ugh, what are yeah. they doing?" I mean, it's like they it's like they want to you know, take a big steaming crap on the original people and stuff like that. But yet when the new, the newest trailer came out, what did they do? They showed, re they recapped like all the, right. the originals. And it's like, well, isn't this what you wanted to get away from? And, but this is how you're selling this new trailer. You want to start off from the beginning and all that good stuff and try to make it nostalgic. And then what are you going to do? Who are you going to kill off this time? Listen, listen, there's nobody left. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, you're going to kill off Chewbacca and, and, and um, Lando. I mean, what are, what are you doing? Yeah, it's just it, – it's it's so funny. I just find it so ironic that my daughter, who is the one they seem to be doing all this – you know, she's a 13-year-old girl. That's the one they seem to be aiming all this stuff at, hates it now. <laughs> That's the big demographic right there. And they – yep. Like you, you guys blew it. You completely blew it. This was a girl. This was this was your dream. This was when the when the executives when when Kathleen Kennedy goes to bed at night. This is what she dreams about. Like she dreams about a little girl who plays with lightsabers and and wants to go and see every Star Wars movie and wants to go and 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 they in their ideal world would want to go to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and ride on the rides and all that. She has no interest in any of it now. Yeah. They, it's, it's like <laughs> the one franchise that could do no wrong 
but yet they found a way. Yeah. They found a way. It's like here's the pot of the gold. Here's the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but yet you lose it. And I, I don't. I don't get it. It's like how, how this this whole series is a money making series. Right. And you guys just screwed it. And you have your people that you know will defend it and. Again, the same people that are the comic book people that are like, if you are talking bad about it, you're this, you're that. And it's uh, like, wait a minute. It's a movie. Yeah. Whatever happened to being able to like and not like stuff? I tell you, Cisco and Ebert would 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 not be able to do what they used to do in this no day. No way. God, there'd be like hate mail, people waiting for them when they get out of the studio. Oh my God. They would be the articles that would be written on the Mary Sue about their toxic masculinity. Oh God. <laughs> the house would be burned down. It's like, good lord, people. Like what? what what happened to being able to like and not like stuff? I swear I think people wake up in, in the morning and go, What can we be outraged about today? <laughs> Like I wake up in the morning, it's like, all right, I got to take my son to school, my daughter to school, do this, do that. And those people just wake up to go, what can I be mad about today? What can right. I be on the Twitter or anywhere else and, you know, cut somebody out and stuff like that? It's like, what? Yeah, it's got to listen. First of all, it's got to be a miserable existence to just always be angry about something. <laughs> I, I was on Facebook today and I was I'm on one of the, the groups as an independent comic group. And, you know, some people were sharing some stuff. And I guess it was a hashtag, the C, the comics gate hashtag. Okay. And somebody actually wrote a, uh, a um, reply on it and was like, uh, he said something like, let's be serious. Why are we allowing the CG hash, hashtag on here when it's hate speech? And I'm like, when the hell did a, a hashtag become hate speech? What kind <laughs> of business do you have that a, a hashtag makes you upset this upset to write a post and and say that these people need to be off of here because it violates the you know such and such of hate speech and all of this and it's like what are you kidding me i i i looked i remember i looked i forget what it was i was trying to look something up i was curious about something and it had to do with gamergate and i was just curious i was trying to find something and i ended up on reddit and uh, I looked at there was this one threat, you know, this one uh, Reddit, whatever you say, a forum, and it literally had a warning at the top of the of of the page that said, if you post in this thread, like it was the guys who were running it, it was like a it was like a pro GamerGate uh, thing, and they basically wrote, if you post in this in this sub you will be banned from this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. It was like, it because obviously they set up some sort of automatic uh, thing that if you, for anyone who posts in that subreddit, they're going to be banned on all these other ones. <laughs> like it's just automatic. It's like, dude, we're, we're talking about video games, not trying to save the world from annihilation video games. Right. <laughs> like, I thought that was the craziest thing. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, so if I went on here and I was just like, hey, what is this? You know, <laughs> that would get me banned from a bunch of other subreddits. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. It's like you have to self-censor yourself or I'm going to get banned or I'm going to get hate mail or this or that. And it's like, what is going on? I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I, I tell you what, I got... um. I remember I was posting something and I don't know if it was like somebody's campaign or whatever it was. And I, the, it was the first time I used the comics gate hashtag and it was like, all right, I'm doing this. <laughs> like what, what are these people going to do? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I had Ethan, uh, their driver. He, he re he retweeted one of my tweets last week. And I had people attacking me because they don't like him. And I was like, what in the world? I'm like, is this what he goes through daily from these crazy people? I can't even imagine. And it's like the only time that I have to use block on there. And it was like, this is insane. This is, this is, you know, a comic book. Right. Again, a comic book people. I did. I remember there was a, there was a, there was a thread on Twitter. Uh, somebody was, I forget who it was now. 
but it was two different pros and one of them was like a comics gate pro and the other one was just a you know like one of the the typical like marvel whatever and they actually seemed to be having a semi you know they, they were having a discussion but they weren't just instantly calling each other names or anything like that um and i just chimed in about something uh like basically just trying to like hey this is good we're you know we're talking you know peers are talking to one another and not just blocking everyone or whatever it was something along those lines and just trying to like support the idea of hey let's like not be idiots all the time and <laughs> and sure enough a certain uh blue wig wearing cosplayer <laughs> who i won't name chimed in oh. and started going at me about well they're not peers because this guy is a hate person and blah 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 yada 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 and i was just like you know what block i'm no <laughs> like i'm not even <laughs> it's just like the blockchains that i'm on with some of the people like you know some professionals and it's like i've never even had any kind of interaction with these people but somehow i ended up on some list where oh yeah yeah and it's like what in the world is going on yeah i find that all the time i'll, I'll go to look at something and or i'll see like a thread and i see half the tweets i'm not allowed to see because I, I can tell it's a block thing because I follow them on Twi on Instagram and they follow in, you know, they don't have me blocked on Instagram. There's no <laughs> on Instagram. It's just, they get into a blockchain and it's like block, block everybody that may have some kind of difference with you. Oh yeah. And that's the thing. Like I know at one point they were basically just anyone who followed Ethan or anyone who followed Zach when he was still on Twitter, you were instantly going to get hit with a blockchain. Yeah. Like it was just guaranteed. That's ridiculous. I mean, if you want people to support what you do, that's one thing you don't need to do is block everybody that because not everybody's going to agree with you. Not everybody's going to agree with you. That's just life. Well, that's I mean, the, the funny thing about it is if let's say, for, like, for example, let's just use, Ethan, use Ethan as an example. The guy has been in the business for 26 years. So if I'm someone who knows nothing about comics gate knows nothing about any of this other stuff. Maybe I was somebody who read green lantern back in the day. And like, I just happened to be on Twitter and I'm like, Oh yeah, he was, he was a really good artist. I liked his work on green lantern. Yeah. I'll follow him. Maybe he'll post some cool art or something. Yeah. Now suddenly I'm going to be blocked by hundreds of other comic professionals. <laughs> yeah. And what's so funny is he, he's been working with, you know, working along these people for 20 some years. And then all of a sudden he, he's the bad guy because he is not the same as they are. And so they labeled him this, they labeled him that. And now the same people who said they wanted to work with him two years ago, right. are, you know, talking crap about him and stuff like that. And then if you say anything about that, then you're blocked from them. And it's like, Whoa, well, I can't, I can't imagine just like a person who is not, ha you know, listen, there are lots of, I know it feels sometimes like everybody is involved in the drama and all that. There's lots and lots and lots of people who have no clue about any of this stuff. Yeah. And and any of them, imagine how weird it would be for them to stumble onto, like I said, like they see Ethan, let's say, and maybe they liked his work on Flash Rebirth or Green Lantern or whatever. And so they they throw him a follow just because like whatever, like maybe they're following, you know, hundreds of people on Twitter and they're just like, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah whatever. I'll follow him. And then they go to follow, like they go to see something else. And they're like, why am I blocked? Why is this guy blocking me? Why is this one blocked? I'm blocked by all these people. Who are these people? Exactly. Like, and then they're like, oh, these are comic book. Why am I being blocked by all these comic book people? <laughs> and then you know what's going to happen is that there's people that are blocked by the normal people. Guess what? They're going to go and find out what's going on. And then they're not going to want to follow them anymore. Then they're going to go on to the other side that, you know, they were neutral in the past, but now since they've been blocked, they're like, all right, maybe this guy's telling the truth about how they really are and stuff like that. Right. Well, so that was why, that was why for the life of me, I did not understand the way they, uh, people went after Peter Samedi when he put out Alterna's social media policy. Yeah. Um, that was the most absurd thing I've ever seen. The reaction to that. He literally in the policy, it said, just don't use blockchains and block bots because you're going to block people that have nothing to do with anything. If someone's bothering you, if someone's harassing you, if someone's doing something disgusting, block them. Go ahead. Just block people individually. 
because otherwise you're going to be blocking customers who are no longer going to be customers because they're not going to see you promoting your books. Yeah. And people went insane. Yeah, I never I never understood that either. I'm, I'm, I was just like, what? what? What are they getting so upset about? It was this bizarre overreaction of we should be allowed to use blockchains and block and blah, blah, blah. And it was like, it turned into this whole thing and then not even get started on what happened later to port to Peter uh, when he was swatted. I mean, that's yeah. just disgusting, but this like for the life of me, I don't understand. There are people out here on the internet like me, like, Lots of other people out there. There's people like, I mean, Tug used to do it. A lot of people, I, I mean, I know he's backed off from doing it now, but there's a lot of people out there. They who were, are, yeah, I mean, who are more than willing to promote people's books. If it looks good, if it looks fun, you know, if it looks like a good comic book. And yet, for some reason, we're villains because we want to promote comic books. Yep. Back, the ultimate thing is it's just a comic book. That's right. all it is. At the end of the day, it's pages with pictures on it. <laughs> it really is. Well, and that's why, like I said, it, and it's funny because, like I said, I, I really, I want comics to succeed. But you know what? If that means if if the mainstream has to die and then the indies have to take over the world, that's fine because at one time Marvel was an indie. Mm -hmm. You know, so. That's just the way life is. If if one day Marvel and DC are gone because the companies that own them now are not concerned with making money off the comic books because no. that's not their main business. If Alterna takes over the world or someone else, well, whoever it may be, takes over the world because their entire business revolves around selling comics, good. That's what it needs to be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> AT and T it was AT and T that owns DC. Yeah, and you know I I don't think they could care less about DC. No, at, at some point you know someone somewhere within that company within that giant conglomeration is going to look at numbers, and at some point the numbers are going to get to a point where they're going to say, okay, kill that, it's not worth it. Yeah, or we'll farm it out to other. Yeah. Stuff companies and all that good stuff well that's i mean the thing is like people are always saying well no they have to keep it alive because they you know where are they going to get their material for the movies or or how are they going to keep the copyright they'll just farm out the characters yeah I they'll mean, just farm it out if you want to make a movie listen comic book writers aren't writing the movies anyway you're just hiring a screenwriter yep and they're <laughs> everywhere yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> they're just <laughs> the screenwriters are comic book writers the day before, and then they become screenwriters. That's all it is. Right. So, like, there's no like this whole thing of like, no, they have to keep the comics. No, they don't. Nope. They don't. There's no reason. There's there's literally not one good reason unless they're making money. That's I, a good reason. <laughs> and I don't believe that's happening. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I would like to see what their books look like. And I mean, if it was a normal company, they'd already be like, we're, we're shutting down. We're, we're shutting the doors. Right. And that's where you see, like, they don't, they know, like, the people who are working at Marvel, the people who are working at, all these people who were pitching a fit about the idea of promoting their books, they're all working for companies that co selling comics is not their main business. Selling comics is not what's keeping the lights on. When you talk about something like Alterna Comics or, you know, some of the other really small houses out there that are publishing books, if the the only way they're making money is by selling comics. So they care about promoting those comics and selling those comics because that is what's keeping the lights on for them. Well, that's their livelihood. Right. And that's that's the key. They're the ones who are hungry because they need it. And that's why they're the ones who are out there busting their hump, promoting. Peter has been everywhere the last like week and a half. Yeah, I doing saw him today in the middle of the day when you normally wouldn't, you know, see somebody like that out there promoting. And he was just promoting yeah, he, the heck. He has been everywhere promoting the hell out of this his alternaween campaign. Because ultimately, that's going to lead to more kids reading comics, which is hopefully in the long run lead to more kids buying comics in the future. And of course, 
he would hope they'd be buying his comics. That's like but, if you go to a church and it's mostly old people, it's like, guess what? That church is not going to be around much right. longer because a lot of these people are dying out. You're not going to have a church. That's why if you ever go to a church like that, it's like you better try to get some some younger people in there or that church is going to be gone in the next five or six years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and that's You need the kids. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have, you know, but you don't, the whole key is the, the one thing that the other companies don't seem to get is yes, you want to bring the kids in, but you don't throw the old people out. No. <laughs> like You don't throw out the old people to bring the kids in. You bring the kids in alongside the old people. Yeah, it's like they should go back, you know, 20, 30 years and see what worked then and bring it back today because, uh, you know, there was both kids and adults reading comics at that time. Now, right. Like I said, like when I go to a comic shop, there's my child. That's about it. Oh, yeah. No, there's there's kids. It's unfortunate, but like kids are not. They're just not into it. They're not buying it. They're not into it. And when you try to get them into it, what are you going to show them? <laughs> exactly. Pill them in know, a wooden boy. That's what you show them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, like I said, that's why I love, I absolutely am in love with the energy that is going on with the crowdfunded books and with the indie books. And that's what, I mean, that's what little shameless self-promotion now. That's what inspired me to start this whole idea of doing a free online fanzine, just promoting comics. I'm not getting any money from it. I'm not charging anything for it. I'm not making anything from it. And it's just extra work for me to do when I come home from work at night. <laughs> but I'm putting together this, this fanzine. The link is in the description so you can sign up. It's going to come right to your mailbox. If you sign up, it'll come right to your email and you can get it. The first issue is coming out in September and I plan on doing monthly issues and I'm going to put them online as well, but you'll get it first if you sign up. But my whole point with this is to just share my excitement and my joy at seeing these new comics and just spreading the word. And, and that's like, I just want more people to read comics. <laughs> exactly. I want the comics to be around for, you know, my, 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 my children and, you know, their children. I mean, it's something I grew up with, something I loved when I was a kid. You know, I still love them today, even though, you know, they don't love me, but, you know, <laughs> I do love them. I mean, I love the art. I like, you know, the older stories, not the stories today, but, you know, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's nice. I mean, I'm sitting in my office right now and behind me are boxes of comics, comics on a shelf. And then I look at my shelves and they're all full of comic figures and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, if you look at this, it's like, this is it. This is comics for for you know people who actually like comics who love comics is you know the memorabilia the, the the comic books i mean it's just i want that to continue for everybody i mean you know i don't want to see it go away right it's a uniquely american art form and it would really be awful if there was a generation that just never knew comics and they were just gone yeah. It, re it really would be, it would be an absolutely awful thing. These, com Oh, sorry. No, I was just gonna say these comics, these characters, you know, the mainstream characters, the Batmans, the Supermans and the Spider-Mans, all the, they are, you know, you've heard, you've heard it before. It's been said many times. They are the modern mythology. They are, You're our, exactly. they're our version of Hercules and Achilles. And all, that's what that is. That's our modern mythology. And it's just awful to me that like, this is like, people are just going to just let it die because they just really don't care. They're just doing it so that they can hopefully get a TV deal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you look at some of these comics that come out and, you know, like I said, I am nowhere near a professional artist, but it's like, where are they picking these people up from? I mean, where are these people coming from? I mean, it's just like, it's the laziest stuff I've ever seen. Oh yeah, no. There's some god awful art out there now, and I'm like, how are they professional? What? How did they get there? I would, you know, it sounds it sounds really bad, but like there are times when I look at certain things, and I think to myself, like, I would listen. I'm not a professional artist by any means. I would be embarrassed if my name was on that. 
Yeah. Like that's 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 really sad. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, there's one guy I follow on Twitter, and he shows some of the art, and it's just like, what? This has got to be fake. And then it's like, no, this is real. And it's like, I don't, I would like to know where they're coming from because, you know, when I was a kid and you wanted to get a job in the comic, you know, you had to be on, you know, you had to have your A game. I mean, you had like Todd McFarlane, you got Eric Larson, you got all of those guys back then. And now you look at it and it's like, wait, what? My twelve, my eleven year old could draw better than that. Yeah, yeah, it's so much. And and honestly, and I think this is like to me, this is the ultimate worst thing you can say about a comic. And it's true about so many of them now. It's just the the art is just boring. Yeah, it's just utterly and completely boring. Yeah, they and don't. You, you you have those those few out there that still are just throwing out awesome work. But then oh yeah, the ones that's just like. Yeah, I wouldn't, you know, use it as toilet paper. It's funny because, you know, I, there was just an article. Somebody, I forget who it was. Somebody did a video about it, um, about where is the, you know, where are the next uh, generation of, of hot artists going to come from? And, and, and I, did a, I, did a, I did a video way back. I think it was maybe like, a, it might have been close to a year ago, where I answered that question by saying, where where is the next superstars where are they they're not working in the mainstream no they're, they're all doing crowdfunded books or indie books it's the comic skate people it's the people like narwhal you see that guy's art oh yeah that guy's art is incredible it's so unique and that's the kind of thing that years ago like you would have seen that somewhere and been like whoa, I would love to see this guy draw a Green Lantern or I'd love to see this guy work on, you know, whatever it might be. Because you know, like, it would be really cool looking. You know, like, I used to do that all the time. I would be, like, super excited about, oh, I'm going to get a chance to see, you know, McFarlane draw Batman. You know, like, yeah. like that kind of stuff. Like, you always love to see, like, the artists that you liked, you loved to see their interpretations of these famous characters. It was always really cool. And you don't have a lot of that anymore. Now it's, it's all these guys for whatever reason are not being hired to work at the big two. And so their fantastic art is just serving their own characters. Yeah. And the bad thing about it is, is that if they were somehow down the line, you know, associated with comic skate, then they're not going to be hired by the big two. Right. Because then there'd be a backlash and then they don't want that. So we're in that culture that, you know, we got to appease everybody. Well, think, I mean, it's crazy to just like run down, like real quick to just run down some of the people involved. You look at, you know, we talked about Kane and white earlier, mm -hmm. that guy, how is he not? Like, yeah, didn't he, uh, well, I forgot what it was in. I think it was like Uber or something that I, that's the first time I ever seen like his art. I think it was Uber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that guy, like, how is that guy not working every month on a huge title? Exactly. That guy is absolutely incredible. His art, look, like I said, Narwhal has a completely different style, totally different, but still cool. And like, there's no reason that he shouldn't be working somewhere doing something. Like, there's so many of these guys with just incredible talent. I look, uh, Shinobi Sasquatch, Rob Willis. Oh God, yeah, I caught that guy. <laughs> I caught him the other day. I was like, or on Twitter, I was like, you're the, you know, you're the next Mark Silvestri. And, I mean, his his art is just mind blowing. It's insane when he posts art, and I I laugh because he'll post something and he'll be like, "Yeah, it's not quite finished yet. I'm still kind of tweaking some stuff." And I'm looking at it like, "No, this is perfect." <laughs> like, yeah, because like, like, his art is incredible. Like, again, it's another guy. Like, how are these people? I mean, it's great. I honestly, I think at this point, I think it's wonderful that these people are out there and they're making the books that I want to read and they're not working on some terrible book where everybody's just sitting around talking or over coffee for the whole issue. Yeah. <laughs> that's how, like, that's how a lot of them are now. And it's just like, good Lord, get to the action. Like imagine wasting, imagine wasting Rob Willis's art on an issue where all it is is just people sitting in a coffee shop talking. Yeah. That's like back, back in the day, Hey, raw or, or Todd McFarlane, we want you to draw Peter and Mary Jane for three pages just sitting watching TV. And it's like, what? 
Yeah, no, like that would be in, like you would never do that. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't get it these days. I, I don't get it at all. Well, this is, I mean, there's there's certain. Uh, I mean, other things too. I mean, covers. I don't understand covers anymore. Uh, <laughs> I know that sounds like a weird thing to say, but like covers on a lot of of the modern, like especially like the Marvel books. I feel like they've most of the time they have nothing to do with what's happening in the issue, and they're generally just like a pinup. Yeah. It's like clickbait. It it's is just, clickbait. My son said it's like clickbait. He's right. <laughs> yep. He's absolutely right. It's it's like you get this beautiful like and sometimes they're beautiful looking, but they're still just like portfolio pieces. They're not they're not comic book covers. Yeah. You know, I remember back in the day going into a store and seeing I vividly remember there was one issue of I forget which book. It was one of the Spider-Man books. And on the cover, it was basically like all yellow, I believe, like the background. And it literally, it just had the Punisher holding a gun to Peter Parker's head and a word, a speech balloon saying, I know your secret, Parker, you know, or something along those lines. And I remember looking at that and going like, holy crap, I need to read that. Yeah. <laughs> they made you want to pick up the book. Now it's just like you're just browsing and it's like, well, no, no, I'll just keep going. Yeah. Like there's nothing like if you go back and look at and I do this every so often. I go back and I look through how to draw comics the Marvel way. Oh, yeah. Um, and it seems like no one at Marvel has read that book in a while. But yeah. you look at that whole section they have about covers. They don't do any of that. No. Nope. <laughs> like every bit of advice that's in that book about how to make a good cover, they don't do any of it. Not at all. Not at it's all. It's like they made a book about the Marvel thing and then they just Marvel ignores it. Yeah, it's like, no, we don't want nothing to do with this. Throw it away. Yeah, it's they like, absolutely. It's the old Marvel way. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's that's kind of what it is. It's like they don't draw the exaggerated characters anymore. Everyone, like, I saw that one panel of Bishop from an X-Men comic and I don't know which, which issue it was, but it was making the rounds online. I think and, I saw it too. Yeah. And he just looked like a dude in a trench coat. And I mean, he literally, it could have been anyone like it was not, it, it didn't look like Bishop at all. And he looked like uh, if you just looked at that photo and said, okay, describe that man. I would be like, I don't know, maybe like five, seven, five, eight, you know, somebody, somebody stenciled an M on his eye or something like that. Yeah, he's like, I don't know, maybe five seven, five eight. He's probably like, I don't know, maybe one hundred and seventy pounds or something. Like that's what he looked like. <laughs> <laughs> and, like that. and I remember Bishop just with first of all, he had that glorious mullet. Yeah, <laughs> and and he was just huge, like he was an absolute beast. <laughs> <laughs> like no, they, on a gluten-free diet yeah they turned him into this like weird like suburban dad like <laughs> i don't even know it was just awful <laughs> <laughs> and i don't mind and you know and it's funny because like i said i i don't mind like different styles but that doesn't even look like the same character yeah, I don't want my comics to look like something, you know, from an advertising firm or something like that. And it looks right. just like cookie cut out, you know, click and paste, you know, just mannequins on a page or something. Exactly. And, and I think a lot of it is, is that you do get the uh, 3D model people out there that, you know, they put the 3D model down and then they draw over it. And then that's that's how it is. There's no yeah. exaggeration. There's no expression or anything like that. Yeah, it's it's I, you get a lot of that, um, and and that's where there's just literally no, there's no no pushing the envelope on the form. You know, I remember um, years ago watching a video. Um, it was like it was Stan Lee and Todd McFarlane, and I don't remember what it was, but my friend had it, and we were watching it, and McFarlane was going to draw Spider Man. Right. So he starts with like, okay, we're just going to start. We'll do a little action line here to kind of get the base of where he's going to be. And we're going to do that. And then he literally goes, and then we're going to put his foot over here. And like the foot yeah. where it was, I mean, anatomically made no sense whatsoever. 
But by the time, damn it, did it not look good? After by the time done. he was done, it was so freaking cool. Yeah, it's like, you know, if you go back and look at it now, it's like his anatomy were all over the place, but dang, does all of his characters not look good. I mean, somebody's talking and the hands are all over the place and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, his, his style was just something. And that's and that's the thing. Like, I feel like we just don't have any of that now. And I like, think why, like Rob, um, Rob Liefeld, his you know the major X is doing so well is because he brings that energy. You know, he does some ep- uh, some issues of it, and then right, and, you know, they somebody else does it on the other issues. But he brings that excitement back. I mean, he's you know pushing it like he did back in the '90s and stuff like that. And people are seeing that, and they're seeing the covers, and you know, it's like yeah we're excited about this. You know, we got somebody in there that actually wants to do it. Well, it's, it's funny. Cause I feel like, again, I think one of the worst things that ever happened to comic books was this strive for realism. Yep. Um, when they tried and, and a lot of it, I think goes back to that, you know, when they started making movies that actually made money, like when they made the first X-Men movie and everybody had to wear like the black leather costume. And then they did that in the comics too. Yeah. And that to me instantly like, no, it's comics. Make them wear ridiculous spandex outfits. It doesn't matter. Like it's comic books. It's okay. You can push things. I'm okay with like, maybe somebody's anatomy is a little bit stretched beyond what would be humanly possible. That's okay. (laughs) As long as it looks cool. Yeah. Like to me, my, my, my measure was always, does it look cool? If it looks cool, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I can forgive, you know, any crazy misgivings of, you know, like you said, if it looks cool. Yeah, and that's just it. Like, we're so many people now, like, they had this push towards the real. It was, it was first, it was the realistic costumes. And, you know, it was, oh, no, well, they wouldn't wear that to, to go fight. Well, first of all, no one has mutant abilities. No one can shoot lasers out of their eyes. Nobody can fly. Right. <laughs> Like, like, so just, just forget about that. Okay. <laughs> like, like, yeah, they probably wouldn't wear spandex to go fight criminals. They would probably wear body armor and things like that. You know, you look at the police, look what they wear, you know, but that's not what I want in a comic book. No. And then it went from the, and then it went from that. It went to, well, the females need to be wearing different costumes. These are absurd, you know, and then it became, well, why do they look like this? They shouldn't, you know, people don't look like this. Well, no, people don't look like that. People don't have claws that pop out of their hands. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it just, and I, th- I feel like this constant, like, push towards quote unquote realism has just hurt and hurt and hurt the art of the comic. Yeah, it's gotten to the point to where it's just like, you know, draw by number. I mean, uh, color by numbers and just, like I said, cookie cutter. It's just, I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah, I would, like I said, I would rather go ahead and make a mistake. I don't care. As long as it looks good, I'm fine with it. I remember looking, one of my favorites, like when he started, when I first saw uh, Joe Mad, when I first started seeing his art, I was like, this guy is nuts. Like, he had such a, you know, he had like the, the manga influence and it was mixed with the Western style and it was totally unique from anybody else who was doing anything back then. And I remember laughing hysterically with my friend. I loved it, but there's a panel of Storm and Wolverine walking side by side. And Wolverine is literally like his shoulders are at Storm's waist. <laughs> and and he's got to be as wide as he like his shoulders are as broad as he is tall and, <laughs> and it's utterly absurd but it looked great <laughs> like and that's what i'm saying like yeah that's not natural anatomy you're not going to see that in a book like that's not going to be in a textbook on how to draw people but damn it if it doesn't look good <laughs> exactly it's a comic Right. And that's, I just, I see it and I see people in comics gate drawing stuff like that. They're drawing exciting looking art, comic book art. And then you've got the other side where you've got people doing traced 3d models, uh, Google sketchup for skylines and stuff. 
literally just using like Google SketchUp to build a skyline. And then they just put like a filter on it in Photoshop and that's their background. Wow. Maybe I need to do that instead of drawing all these stupid. (laughs) (laughs) But like it's, but then I sit there and I'll pull out an old issue of like Ninja Turtles from back in the day. And like the buildings are a little crooked and everything's, you know, might be like the perspective might not be perfect, but it has a cohesive feel to it. And the whole thing just feels right when you're looking at it. And, and I'd rather have that. I'd rather have that than have a precision 3d model for a skyline. You know what I mean? It's just like watching a 2d um, cartoon and then you can, you know, tell when they use the 3d art in it and it just takes you, takes you back a little bit from, yeah, you know, the, the 2D and and I think it's the same way in comics too. Yeah, they do that a lot of times with like um, vehicles and stuff mm-hmm. uh, when they do like in a 2D animated like a show or something. They've done that and like they did that in Futurama with the spaceship all the time. Yeah. Uh, they used to do that on Phineas and Ferb sometimes with some of the vehicles when they try to do a more complicated shot. Um, and SpongeBob the Fry uh, the Fry Games Coliseum that oh, like yeah. went above and it had the 3D model. Yeah. Yeah, they do like that's they, they do it for stuff like that a lot of times. And it you can always tell though. That's the thing. Like as soon as you see it, you know it. <laughs> like and it definitely like it has this weird feeling of like, oh, that's different. Yeah, it kind of yeah. just takes you out of it a little bit. <laughs> and that's you know, and that's a whole thing. I mean, I could get into a whole 2D animation, 3D animation thing, but we'll be here all night. <laughs> 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 so one last time before I let you go, because it's getting late. Um, Pillow Man and Blanket Boy is still on Kickstarter, and it is still live for another few hours on Indiegogo. Um, I put the link in the description to the website, so I think you can get to both from there, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so yeah, so the link to the website is is in the description. Uh, Pillow Man and Blanket Boy dot com. Uh, that was smart of you, by the way, to buy that domain domain. It's, We've had it for a while because, you know, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, nobody would want this. But I was very surprised that, you know, none of this has been I know there's a Pillow Man uh, like play that's been around forever. But I can't believe nobody's ever, you know, tried to do a comic book character on Pillow Man and Blanket Boy. That kind of took me by surprise. <laughs> I was wow. like, wow, my, my son had an idea that nobody else came up with in this entire world. Right. That's pretty awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Surprise. (laughs) So, yeah, so the link is in the description. So if you want to back it on Kickstarter, go for it. Uh, You're going to, do you know when you plan it on relaunching on Indiegogo? Kickstarter. uh, I've got 25 more days to go on that. Um, Indiegogo. I haven't decided yet. Um, Maybe sometime after that, maybe sometime before we, we really hadn't thought about it yet. Okay. But, um, I don't, I want to get it back out sooner than later because I know around, I've always heard that like October, November, December is kind of the slow period on, um, crowdfunding. So, you know, take a look at that, but I don't, I don't know exactly yet. Okay. So yeah, people keep an eye out for it. And then, like I said, it's live on Kickstarter, so you can just go there now and back it right now. And on um, Kickstarter, like I said, we have the $1,500. I mean, it's a very conservative uh, goal. And, you know, we hope that some of the people who maybe, you know, funded us on, on Indiegogo will go and, you know, take that and take it over to Kickstarter so we can try to get that funded. And, you know, you'll be one step ahead of getting your books before everybody else. <laughs> well, that's that's probably what I'll do is uh, I generally stick to Indiegogo, but I have used Kickstarter here and there. Um, I just for whatever reason, I tend to like the interface and everything better on Indiegogo. Yeah, that's what a lot of people say. And, you know, I talked to quite a few people that said also that Kickstarter is a little bit better for um, all ages books. So I'll just have to wait and see, and see okay. if that's true or not. Well, that's good. And that gives you more. I mean, now you got more time to promote. So that's always a plus. Yeah. Um, and then what we'll do, like I said, um, you you guys are more than welcome. You and Parker are both more than welcome to come on anytime. I'd love to have you back. We can chit chat about anything about comics. We can talk about drawing since both of us were 
out of it for a long time and then got back. Maybe we could do a drawing stream or something. Um, that could be fun. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been great. I mean, I can't believe we've been on here. It says two hours and 44 minutes. It yeah. really hasn't seemed like that at all. <laughs> I just looked down at the time earlier and I was like, good Lord, it's already 1042. <laughs> yeah, so everybody out there, keep an eye out. Uh, look on Kickstarter. The link is in the description. You can go to pillowmanandblanketboy.com so you can back uh, Sean and Parker's book. Uh, take a look at it. I'm telling you, it looks good. <laughs> How much... Um, just out of curiosity, like how far along are you in the book? Uh, we It's going to be 48 pages, and we are at 33 right now. Oh, wow. So you guys are almost there. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I um, when I talked to um, – dang, I just forgot his name. Um, whenever I was trying to get this off the ground, he said, you know, have most of your book done. And I, no, it wasn't Ethan. Yeah. It was um, Edwin. Edwin said, you know – try to have most of it done. And I was like, all right. Cause I know some people, they only have like five or six pages done. And then, right. you know, after they fund, they do the rest. And I was like, well, nobody knows who I am. So I want to try to get most of it done and then, you know, get it out quicker, you know, rather than later. So, yeah, we had quite a bit done before we even started to, um, to, to uh, release it or to fund it. Yeah. So that's great. So then by the time the campaign's over, uh, you'll be just about done and getting ready to, to jump into fulfillment. Oh, yeah. So that's awesome. All right. So everybody, like I said, the link's in the description. Pillow Man and Blanket Boy. Sean, Parker, thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and like I said, you guys are welcome back anytime. We'll do it. All right. Take care. Have a good night. And everybody else out there, thank you for watching. If you're watching the replay, thank you again. The link down is below also for Indie Comics Underground. That's my free online fanzine launching in September. Uh, be sure to check it out. The first issue is just about put to bed. I'm going to be finished putting the finishing touches on it this weekend. Um, provided I have time. I have another live stream coming tomorrow with uh, Gilbert Deltrez from Galactic Rodents of Mayhem. Um, that'll be tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, have a good night and peace out.